Kalyan Swagam to Aridu Sanaji Kalani, the name of this lecture is to discuss about the Sentinel's missions from us in a very, very detailed manner. And if you like the content of my channel, then please do like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon button. So, whenever we upload a new video, the direct movements come to mobile. If any of you missed video in no video lectures, then please do come in the comment section. We will definitely include all those information in the coming lectures. So, why do we have to so let's get started. So now I will discuss about the, the different types of generators which are used in the power systems. The different types of generators, the classification of generators in the power system are DC generator and AC generator. DC generator, the name itself, it suggests that the output is a DC nature. Whereas the AC generator means the output is going to have a alternating voltage or alternating current. Again, the AC generator is of two types, one is called as the synchronous generator and always the rotor speed, the rotor speed is always equal to synchronous speed in the synchronous generator. Whereas in the induction generator, the rotor speed should be always greater than the synchronous speed. Then only this induction machine is going to operate in the generating mode. So we can see that clearly generators are going to classify in two types based on the output nature. If the output is in DC nature, we call it as the DC generator. And if the output is in the AC nature, it is called as the AC generator. And the AC output can be produced by two types of generators, which are called as the synchronous generator. Here always the rotor speed is always equal to synchronous speed. Whereas in the induction generator, the rotor, should, the rotor speed should be always greater than synchronous speed. Then only the induction machine is going to operate in the generating mode and then we are going to get the output voltage in AC format. But almost in all the applications, we prefer to use the synchronous generator rather than the induction generator because of so many advantages of synchronous generator when compared to induction generator. That is why most of the applications you can see clearly they are, go they are going to use this synchronous generator rather than this induction generator. So now, one more important concept is called as the based on the ratings. So based on the ratings, suppose for a DC generator. So for a DC generator, always the field winding is always kept on the stator. The field winding is always kept on the stator, whereas the, we can see that the armature winding is always kept on the rotor. So in a DC generator, in a DC generator, always we are going to keep the field winding on the stator and the armature winding is on the rotor. So this arrangement is for all the ratings of DC generator. Irrespective of the rating of the DC generator, no matter whatever the rating of the DC generator, always we are going to keep the field winding on the stator and the armature winding on the rotor. Because when only the commutation is going to get possible with the, if you keep the armature winding on the rotor, the only commutation is a possible and the only we can get the output as a pure DC in nature. So we can say that for a DC generator, in respect to the rating of the DC generator, the field winding is always kept on the stator and the armature winding is always kept on the rotor. Stator means you can say it is basically stationary, whereas the rotor means it is always moving. So therefore we can say it is a non-stationary. So stator is always a stationary part is a rotor is always non-stationary or we can say it is a rotating. So field winding is always kept on the stator whereas the armature winding is also kept, is always kept on the rotor for a DC generator irrespective, irrespective of the ratings of the DC generator. But this is not the same case for the we can say AC, AC generators because now we will see what is the specific reason behind this one. Now you can see clearly in the alternator or we can say basically it is said to be AC generator. We can say that it is alternator or AC generator. So for this alternator or AC generator, for low rating, for low rating means whenever the rating is less than 5 kVA, if the rating of the alternator or yes we can say simply yes generator or alternator if the rating is low rating means less than 5 kva then definitely we are going to keep the field winding on the stator and the armature winding on the rotor 
But for the higher rating, which is greater than 5 kVA, we need to do the reverse process of the previous one. Means the field winding should be kept on the road arm and the armature winding we should keep on the straight arm. We, I will discuss why this is the reason why we have to change this phenomena because I will give you the proper reason in the coming class. So we can say clearly we have alternator, we can say AC generator. For the lower rating, for the lower rating, whenever the rating is less than 5 kVA, we always keep the field winding on the straight arm and the armature winding on the rotor. But for a higher rating, if it is greater than 5 kVA, we prefer to keep the field winding on the rotor and the armature winding on the straight arm. This just we have to do the interchange of this process. So low rating means field winding is on the straight arm and the armature winding is on the rotor. And for higher rating, we do the reverse process. The field winding is kept on the rotor and the armature winding is kept on the stator. So this is the alternator. So in the alternator based on the ratings we have to keep the field winding and the armature winding with the stator or with the rotor. So for a disc generator irrespective of the rating always field winding is on the stator and the armature winding is on the rotor. For an alternator for lower rating we follow the same procedure for a DC generator means field winding is on the stator and the armature winding is on the rotor. But for higher rating for greater than 5 kVA we do the reverse process which is field winding is kept on the rotor and the armature winding is kept on the stator. So now I will discuss why this is the reason why we have to interchange the windings for a higher ratings because you can see clearly for a alternator or we can say an AC generator suppose I will take a low rating machine suppose if I consider a low rating machine suppose if I consider a very low rating machine I have already told you field winding is always kept on the stator and the armature winding is always kept on the rotor for a low rating machine which is specifically the AC generator. Suppose this is the field winding. Let me assume the ratings of these field windings. The ratings of these field windings are 10 kilowatt and with a 500 volt. The field winding has a rating of 10 kilowatt with a supply voltage of 500 volt. Then the amount of DC current which is consumed by this field winding which is power by voltage. So with the ratio of this power rating and the voltage rating we are going to get a 20 ampere this is the amount of current which is flowing through this field winding. So field winding we are going to give a DC supply of 500 volt and the rating of this and the rating of this field winding is 10 kilowatt. The current which is consumed by this field winding is 20 ampere. I have already told you the armature winding is always kept on the rotor. So I have, I have made the armature winding in a star connection with a neutral. So neutral is also available. So outside we are going to get the four terminals. A, B, C and a neutral. So these are the four terminals. So as the stator is, see we can say clearly the stator is going to produce the magnetic field and then as we are going to move the shaft, as we are going to move the shaft, the shaft is going to contain these armature conductors. So whenever the armature conductors are going to cut the magnetic field, a current is being produced. So therefore we have to collect this current as the armature is rotating. So as the armature is rotating, we need to collect the current. We need to collect the current from this rotating armature itself with the help of slip rings and meshes. So these are called as the slip rings. So th through these slip rings and this is a shaft of the or you can say this is a rotor or you can say shaft of this rotor. So with the help of slip rings and the brushes we are going to collect this current from this armature conductors which are present on the rotor. So we can say clearly these are the four terminals R, Y, B and N. So these are the four terminals from this we are going to get the output current or you can say this is said to be a three phase output. So, but if the rating increases, suppose if, the, if you go for the higher rating, then the collecting of huge amount of current from this rotating armature is a very, very hard case or we can say it is a severe pain in the neck. So, that is the reason we prefer, we, we are going to interchange the field winding to rotor and the armature winding to stator for higher rating because as the rotor is rotating, it is very hard to collect the current from a rotating armature. 
so it is a very severe pain in neck so we are going to interchange this process so therefore now feel winding is kept on this rotor and the armature winding is kept on the stator because we can easily collect the current from a stator conductor rather than collecting a current from a rotating armature so listen carefully it is easier to collect a current from a stator conductor rather than a rotating conductor so this is a very important one so with the help of this procedure for higher ratings for higher ratings we are going to interchange the field winding to rotor and the armature winding to stator so this is for the higher rating alternating machines or you can say nails generator machines so i have already told you now i have did the interchange i have did the interchange so therefore we can say that now the field winding is kept on the rotor and the armature winding is kept on the stator see the stator itself is stationary so we can keep the armature winding i have made the armature winding into star fashion with a neutral so we are going to it r y b and this is a rotor on the rotor i have kept the field winding so field winding will have only see field winding will have only two terminals so only two slip sink two two slip rings are required so therefore we, we are going to give the DC supply. I have already told you. I am going to assume the the voltage rating is 500 volt. We are going to give, and the power rating is 10 kilowatt. The amount of current consumed by this field winding, which is power by or the ratio of the power by voltage, which is 10 into 10 to the power of 3 by 5, and we are going to get 20 ampere. So 20 ampere is the amount of current which is taken by this field winding. So now I am going to assume the rating of this. Uh, we can say the rating of this armature conductor is 10 MVA. With 11 kV and 3 phase. So, what is the S is equal to root 3 into V L into I L because of the 3 phase winding. So, I L is equal to S by root 3 into V L. S is equal to 10 MVA. So, 10 into 10 to the power of 6 by root 3 into and we can say V L V L is 11 kV. So, 11 into 10 to the power of 3. So, if we solve this one, we are going to get 525 ampere. So, it's a very huge current. See, huge current you can. You can easily connect from a stationary connector rather than a rotating connector. So that is the reason we have did the interchange. And one more important point that you can easily observe here: the amount, the number of slip rings which are required is only two, whereas in the previous case we need four number of slip rings because as the terminals increase, we have to increase more number of slip rings. Whereas here it is less. That is the reason we prefer to shift the field winding to rotor and the armature winding to stays the stator. For higher rating machines, it's a very important point that you always have to understand the concept behind this one. So now I will discuss the advantages of the armature on stator and the field winding on rotor than field winding on stator and the armature on rotor. See, basically, what I am trying to say, what is the advantages of the keeping the armature on the stator and the field winding on the rotor rather than field winding on the stator and armature on rotor? I have already told you, for higher rating machines, we are going to keep the armature winding on the stator and the field winding on the rotor. Whereas for low rating AC machines or AC Is the meters or alternators? We are going to keep the field winding on stator and the armature winding on rotor. So, what is the basic advantage of the basic advantage of keeping the armature on the stator and the field on rotor rather than keeping the field on the stator and the armature on rotor? The first important advantage is it is very economical and less number of slip rings and the business are required. I have already told you it is very economical. We can say it's a very somewhat lesser cost when compared to the previous one. It is very more economical and lesser number of slip rings and resistors are required. Because I've already told you here, if you are going to shift the process, if you are going to keep the field winding on the rotor, field winding has only two terminals. So as there are two terminals, we need only two number of slip rings and two number of meshes. If you go for the uh, rotor, I mean, can say arm to arm on the rotor, we are going to have the four terminals. Four terminals means four slip rings and four meshes. So we can say the count is very high. That is the reason we always prefer to keep the for higher rating machines. We always prefer to keep the armature winding on the stator and the field winding on the rotor because of that. The number of slip rings are required and the number of meshes are required. So it is very more economical because less number of things required means we have to invest less number amount of money. So it is very economical. It is more economical because less number of slip rings and the meshes are required. Rotational losses are less because The rotor size is a small and less number of slip rings required. See, the rotational losses are, are also very less because the rotor size is very small. I already told you whenever the rotor size is very less, or you can say the rotor size is very less, the rotational losses are also very less. 
it's a very important point so whenever the rotor size is very less or we can say the slip rings decoder are also very less so therefore the rotational losses are also very less less is the rotational losses means less is the rotor size and less number of slip rings are required so rotational losses are also very less because the rotor size is very small and the less number of slip, slip, slip rings are required it is easy to provide required cooling arrangement to the stationary armature by providing the external fans or by circulating hydrogen or helium gas. See, now you can provide the extra amount of cooling to these armature conductors because they are stationary. If they are stationary, we can easily provide the cooling for them. But if the armature conductors are rotating, it is very hard to provide a cooling mechanism for that. So we can say clearly, it is easy to provide the required amount of cooling arrangement to the stationary armature by providing the external fans or by creating or by circulating hydrogen or helium gas. So you can provide the external cooling, the keeping of external fans or you can circulate the amount of hydrogen or helium gas through these armature conductors. If they are stationary conductors, we can easily cool them rather than their rotating conductors. So because, see, if they are stationary, stationary conductors if the armatures are kept on stationary so they are, they are basically stationary so therefore we can easily cool them by keeping the external fans or by circulating the hydrogen or the helium gas through these armature conductors it is easy to provide the required insulation to armature conductors and it is easy to collect the very high currents from stationary armature it can be operated at very high speed the rotor rate and inertia are less see i have already told you it is very easy to provide the required insulation to the armature conductors and it is easy to collect very high currents from stationary armature because the armature winding is on the stator so we can easily provide the required insulation because they are stationary and we can also collect the huge amount of currents from the stationary conductors collecting the huge amount of current from the stationary conductor is very easier rather than collecting the huge amount of current from the rotating conductors it can be operated at very high speed because the rotor weight and the inertia are less see whenever the rotor weight is very less in size whenever the rotor weight is less in size because the field winding has lesser number of tones as the tones are very less the overall weight is going to be decreased so whenever the overall weight decreases the inertia is also decreased so rotation loss are also decreased so these are the basic advantages for higher rating machines of alternator or AC generator. So whenever we are going to keep the staged and we can say armature conductors on the stator, they are basically stationary in nature. So as they are very stationary, we can provide the insulation in a very easier manner and we can collect the huge amount of currents from the stationary armature conductors because collecting a huge amount of current from the stationary armature conductor is very easier rather than collecting a huge amount of current from a rotating conductor and also we can say that as the rotor has in only field winding so field winding has less number of tones so therefore its weight is going to decrease the overall weight of the rotor is going to get decreased so whenever the weight decreases the inertia is also very less means they can have a speed very good speed in a small amount of time they can quickly go to the required speed because the inertia is less and also as the inertia and the rotor weight is less the rotational loss are also very less for this case and more output can be obtained to provide more copper material in the slots and deeper slot and the stronger teeth can be provided so we can say clearly as there are the armature conductors on the stator we can we can get the the more output from them so we can get whatever the output we require we can get the more amount of output from the armature if they are very stationary and we can provide the more amount of copper material in the slots you need to increase that depthness of the slot so therefore the depthness of the connector increases you are going to get the huge amount of current from the stationary connectors so thereby more output can be obtained to provide more copper material in the slots if you want more output then go for the more depth of the slots the depth of the slots increases the connector the overall connectors size is also going to get increased so you can get more amount of output and deeper slots and the strong teeth can also be provided so what is the output you required means 
go for the more amount of copper material in the stars by providing the more deep plates of the stars and we can say more deeper stars and stronger teeth can be provided by this case. So these are the some of the important advantages of keeping the armature winding on the stator and the field winding on the rotor when compared to the reverse case. So these are the some of the important advantages that you always have to understand the concept behind this one. So now we will discuss the types of windings which are used. The types of windings which are used in the, we can see in the machines, the different types of windings which we are going to use. The, the windings are classified into two types. One is called the concentrated winding and the distributed winding. The windings are classified into two main categories. One is called as the concentrated winding and the distributed winding. So concentrated winding is always used in the transformer. Concentrated winding is always used in the transformer. Whereas the distributed winding is used in DC machines and also the induction machines and the synchronous machines. So is that carefully? Distributed winding is again classified into two types. One is called as the full pitch winding and the short pitch winding. So this is called as the full pitch winding and this is the short pitch winding. So now. In the short pitch winding, it is again classified into two types. One is called as the integral slot winding and the other one is called as the fractional slot winding. So these are the different types of windings which are used in the machine scores. The first one is the windings are classified into two main types. One is called as the concentrated winding and the distributed winding. So concentrated winding is mainly used in the transformer and distributed winding for the remaining machines except transformer. So again, distributed winding is, all, is again classified into full pitch winding and the short pitch winding. Again short pitch winding is again classified into integral slot winding and the fractional slot winding. So the types of windings which are used in the machines are the two types one is called as the cross centered winding is always used in the transformer and the distributed winding is always used in the except the transformer it is only used in the remaining cases. And the, we can say that simply it is said to be the full pitch again the distributed winding is again classified into full pitch winding and the short pitch winding and then the short pitch winding is again classified into integral slot winding and the fractional slot winding. So this is the main classification of the windings. So now we are going to discuss one more important concept which is called as the suppose let me assume the number of slots the number of slots in the stator let me assume the number of slots in the stator are 12. And I am going to assume the number of poles, the number of poles are again 2. So we can say that, let me assume the number of slots in the, in the stator are basically 12 and the number of poles are also 2. So let me see here, the slots, see this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are the 12 slots in the stator. So 12 slots means, we can say clearly, there are 2 poles, so slots per pole. See the pole pitch means the number of slots per poles. Pole pitch is the ratio of the total number of slots by total number of poles. Or we can say simply it is called as the, the number of poles, the number of slots which are assigned for each and every pole is called as the pole pitch. So 12 by 2 is called as a 6. So go for the 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is for one pole and the remaining 6 for the other pole. Let me assume this is the south pole and this is the north pole. And also let me assume a small amount of convention which is called as the, see for south pole I am going to assume the conductors which are present near the south pole will have the current which is going outward. Whereas in the north pole is the reverse case it is coming inward because whatever the outgoing should go through the incoming also. So we can say, I am going to assume under the south pole, the currents are going to leave the conductors, whereas in the north pole, the currents are going to enter the conductors. So this is a some type of convention I am going to use here. And here, the pole, see we can say the pole pitch has a, the electrical degree, or we can say the pole pitch has an electrical degree, which is called as the 180. The electrical angle of the pole pitch is always equal to 180 because electrical angle is equal to total number of poles by 2 into mechanical angle. So for a mechanical angle, so for now the number of poles are here 2, so 2 by 2 into the mechanical angle. So mechanical angle is equal to electrical angle in this case is equal to 1, is equal to always 180 degree. Pole pitch is the ratio of the total number of slots by total number of poles. In this case, the total number of slots are 12 and the number of poles are 2. So 12 by 2 is called as a 6. So for 6 number of 
conductors we are going to assume one pole and the remaining six for the other pole and the electrical angle of pole which is always equal to 180 so this is the thing that you have that i have already told you because the electrical angle of a pole which is always equal to 180 degree so you can say clearly between two stars between two stars what is the mechanical angle so between two stars the mechanical the mechanical angle is simple which is the total 360 degree by number of stars the number of stars are 12 so 360 by 12 which is 30 degree so 30 degree is the mechanical angle between two adjacent stars but now for pole pitch for pole pitch we simply we can say so suppose this is the first conductor so 1 plus 6 is nothing but 7 so this is the angle so you can see clearly 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you can see clearly 1 2 3 4 5 6 so therefore we can say 6 or we can say 6 stars are there between them so 6 into 30 is nothing but 180 here the mechanical angle is always equal to electrical angle because the total number of poles are 2 so electrical angle is equal to total number of poles by 2 into mechanical angle as total number of poles is equal to 2 2 by 2 is 1 so therefore the electrical angle is always equal to mechanical angle so the mechanical angle between two stars two adjacent stars is nothing but total 360 degree by total number of stars which is 360 by 2 is nothing but 30 degree so 30 degree is the we can say it is a mechanical it's a mechanical angle between the two adjacent stars so now we want the electrical angle of pole pitch pole pitch is nothing but we have to go from 1 to 7 because 1 plus 6 is 7 so we have to find all this angle here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we can say 6 into 30 is nothing but 180 degree so mechanical angle angle is equal to electrical angle whenever the total number of poles are 2 so always remember the main formula the pole which means the number of stars by pole and the electrical angle is equal to the total number of poles by 2 into mechanical angle so let me take a one turn so let me take a one turn which is see this is a one turn one turn means we can see these are the two conductors so one turn will have two conductors and this is said to be overhang because it is a extra winding so it is said to be overhang so therefore ab cd so ab is a conductor cd is a conductor so in a one turn we have two conductors with some overhang between them so in a one turn there are two conductors so coil is nothing but One turn or more than one turns. See, a coil is called as the more than one turn, or we can say simply it is a one turn. So a coil can have more than one turns or just one turn. So listen carefully. The one turn will have two conductors, whereas the coil is called as the it is a combination of turns, or we can say it has more than one turn, or we can say it is a one turn. So therefore, one turn or more than one turns is said to be a coil, whereas one conductor means. so one turn is called as a two conductors because one turn will have two conductors and one coil see a coil is basically representing one turn or more than one turns it's a very important point a one turn will always have two conductors because here it is a one turn a b is a one conductor and c d is the other conductor so we can say there are two conductors and which is called as a connection between these conductors it is basically it is also called as the overhang so coil coil means basically it is a one turn or more than one turns See what is the meaning of coil span? So coil span means the distance between the connection of the slots, or we can say conductors. Suppose if you are going to connect the conductors from slot one to slot seven, then what is the coil span, or we can say distance between them, which is seven minus one is called as a six. So we can say you are joining one to seven slots. So if you are joining the conductors from slot one to slot seven, so what is the span between these two conductors, which is equal to seven minus one is equal to six. So this is the six. So coil span means it is the distance between the connection of the conductors, or we can say it is basically the distance between the connection of conductors. As I am going to connect the conductor one, see conductors in slot one to conductor in slot seven. So the distance is seven minus one is equal to six. So this is called as a coil span. For a small example, if coil span is equal to pole pitch. Then only it is called as a full pitch winding. So listen carefully. If the coil span is equal to pole pitch, 
then only it is said to be a full pitch winding otherwise otherwise suppose if the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is called as a short pitch winding or we can say short pitch coil if the coil span is greater than the pole pitch it is called as the over pitch winding or simply we can call it as the over pitch coil it's a very important point that you always have to understand this concept and without this it is very hard to go for the remaining concepts so whenever the coil span is equal to the pole pitch it is said to be a full pitch coil or full pitch winding if the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is said to be a short pitch coil and if the coil span is greater than the pole pitch it is said to be a over pitch coil or the over pitch winding see induced voltage in the first conductor see induced voltage in the first conductor is suppose e and the representation is in this direction so basically a vector the induced voltage in the first conductor is basically e and let me assume the direction is in this manner it is a vector quantity and the induced voltage in the seventh conductor is also e and the direction is also in the same direction then what is the resultant because these two conductors are being connected by a they are being connected so what is the overall induced voltage the two vectors are in the same direction the resultant vector is a 2e plus e plus e is called as a 2e so therefore this is the resultant vector so we can say this is the resultant voltage which is induced in that coil which is connecting which is a connecting 1 and 7 because here, here basically now if you see clearly the coil span is equal to 6 and the point is also is equal to 6 so we can say it is said to be a full pitch winding or full pitch coil so the induced voltage the induced voltage in the first conductor because the connected place in the slot 1 is e this is the arrow of the e and the induced voltage in the seventh conductor is also e is again the same direction e so as these two conductors are being connected in the base over and so we can say that they are series so go for the addition of the overall voltage e plus e is called as the 2e so this is the resultant voltage which is induced Suppose if I go for the connection of the slot 1 to slot 6, whatever the connector present in the slot 1, slot 1, and if I go for the connection of the, the connector present in the slot 6, then what is the coil span? The coil span is 6 minus 1 is equal to 5, which is lesser than the pole pitch because the pole pitch in this case, I have assumed is equal to 6. So 5 is less than 6. So it is said to be short pitch winding or short pitch coil. So therefore, if the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is said to be short pitch winding or short pitch coil this important point i have already told you so whenever the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is said to be a short pitch winding or we can call it as the uh, short pitch coil or short pitch winding so here suppose if i connect the connector in the slot 1 to connector in slot 6 then what is the coil span which is 6 minus 7 is equal to 5 which is lesser than the pole pitch because the pole pitch whatever i have assumed in this case is 6 so whenever the phi is less than 6 it is said to be a short pitch winding so whenever the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is called as the short pitch winding suppose if i go for the another case suppose if i connect the 1 to 8 means the conductor present in the slot 1 to the conductor present in the slot 8 if i am going to connect these two then what is the coil span it is 8 minus 6 8 minus 1 is equal to 7 so but the pole pitch is 6 so 7 is greater than 6 so we can say the coil span is greater than pole pitch it is said to be over pitch winding or over pitch coil so these things i already told you so whenever the whenever the if the coil span is greater than pole pitch it is called as the over pitch winding it is called as the over pitch winding so if i connect the conductor in slot 1 if i connect the conductor in slot 1 to connector in slot 8 the coil span is which is 8 minus 1 is equal to 7 so in this case the pole pitch is 6 so coil span is greater than pole pitch it is called as the over pitch winding so always whenever the coil span is equal to full pitch it is called as the so whenever the coil span is equal to whenever the coil span is equal to pole pitch it is it is called as a full pitch winding and whenever the coil span is lesser than pole pitch it is called as the short pitch winding and whenever the coil span is greater than pole pitch it is called as the over pitch winding so this is a very important thing that you always have to remember this concept so let me show all this full pitch winding short pitch winding and over pitch winding in this diagram so i have already told you there are 12 slots in the stator so these are the 12 slots so therefore now i have already told you the number of poles i have assumed is 2 so therefore 12 by 2 the slots by pole is called as the pole which is 12 by 2 is equal to 6 so 
six slots for pole one and six slots for the other pole. I have already told you I am going to assume this as the south pole and this as the north pole. And let me, I have already assumed that the connectors in the south pole are going to have a current which is leaving and in the north pole the currents are going to have entering. All these things I have already told you. Suppose if I connect the conductor, the slot, connect the slot 1 to the conductor in slot 7. The pole, the coil span is equal to 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. So 6 is equal to pole pitch. It is called as the, it is called as the full pitch winding. So this is called as the full pitch winding. So whenever you connect the conductor in slot 1 to conductor in slot 7, the coil span is equal to 6 and the pole pitch is also is equal to 6. So we can call it as the full pitch winding. Suppose, suppose if you go for the connection of the conductor in slot 1 to conductor in slot 6, then what is the coil span? 6 minus 1 is equal to 5, which is lesser than the pole pitch. So it is called as the short pitch winding. It is called as the short pitch winding. Suppose if I connect the connector in slot 1 to connector in slot 8, then the coil span is called as the 8 minus 1 is equal to 7, as it is greater than the pole pitch. So it is called as the over pitch winding. So this is the full pitch winding, this is the short pitch winding, and this is the over pitch winding. So always the the conductors in the full pitch winding, if this is the E, the and the and the connector in the seventh winding is also E, the resultant volume is 2 E. So always remember one small thing, the conductors in the full pitch will have the induced voltage in the same direction. So whatever the conductors in the full pitch, they have the voltage, induced voltage in the same direction. So go for the arithmetic addition of the resultant voltage in that winding. So therefore, whatever the connectors present in the full pitch winding, they are all going to have the induced voltage in the same direction and if you want to figure out the resultant voltage in that winding, go for the arithmetic addition because they are all in the same direction, just go for the arithmetic addition. So now, we will discuss about the slot angle. Slot angle means, I have already told you, basically what is the meaning of slot angle? Slot angle means, it is a mechanical angle, it is the mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots. So, slot angle means, it is a mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots. I have already told you, in this case, the total number of slots are 12 and the overall mechanical angle is 360 degree because segment is in a circular fashion, so therefore, 60 by 12 is nothing but 30 degree. So you can go for this formula or there is a basic formula which is called as the 180 degree by pole pitch. Either you can apply this one or either you can apply this formula. Every day you are going to get the same result which is 180 degree by the pole pitch here is called as the slots per pole which is pole pitch is equal to 6. So 180 by 6 is equal to 30 degree. So you can apply either this one or either this formula. Anyway you are going to get the same result. So what is the meaning of slot angle means? Slot angle means we can say that it is the mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots. Simply the basic fundamental equation which is 360 degree by total number of slots. In this case the total number of slots are 12. So 360 by 12 is equal to 30 degree or either you can use the general formula which is called as the 180 degree by pole pitch. 180 degree by pole pitch. 180 degree by pole pitch means 12 slots per pole. 12 slots per 2 poles. 12 by 2 is 6. So 180 by 6 is 30 degree. So now, connecting from 1 to 6. So connecting from 1 to 6 means the coil span is 6 minus 1 is equal to 5 which is lesser than the pole pitch. So it is said to be a short pitch winding. So if this is the induced voltage in the conductor 1, if E is the induced voltage in the conductor 1 and this is the direction of the induced voltage in the conductor 6. So you can see clearly this is the direction of the induced voltage in the conductor E and this is the direction of the induced voltage in the, in the conductor 6. Then what is the resultant? Go for the resultant of these two vectors. We are going to get the, the resultant voltage which is induced in between the 1 and 6 conductors. So as I have already told you one important point. As I have already told you one important point. See, I have already told you one important basic point which is called as the between two slots, the mechanical angle is 30 degree. So between two slots, the mechanical angle is, or you can say the slot angle is 30 degree. So now, between 1 and 6, we have 5 slot angles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 into 30 is called as a 150. So you are going to get 150. I will show this in the figure. So you can see clearly, I am going to connect the connector 1 and connector 6. So between 1 and 6 connectors, there are 5 slot angles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 slot angles. One slot angle is 30 degree. So, 5 into 30 is 150. So, this is the 150 angle. If this is 150, 
this is called as overall angle is 180. So 180 minus 150 is nothing but 30 degree. 30 degree is called as the slot angle. Slot angle I am going to represent by a symbol which is called as the alpha. Which is called as the yeah I am going to assume the symbol as alpha is the angle between this one. Similarly, if I am going to connect the connect the slot one to connect the slot five. Suppose if I connect the connect the slot one to connect the slot five. Then how many number of slot angles are going to present? One, two, three, four. So four into thirty. Four into the thirty is nothing but one twenty. So one twenty is the angle between the induced one is in the connector one, induced one is in the connector five. If this is one twenty, or else one eighty. So one eighty minus one twenty is nothing but sixty. So this is the sixty. Let me assume this angle is called as the alpha. So this angle is I am going to assume it as the alpha. So I am going to assume this as the angle as alpha. So now So generally in the short pitch warning, what is going to happen? So this is for the one case and this is for the other case. So now we will discuss in generally in a short pitch warning what is going to happen. So generally in a short pitch warning, what is going to happen is suppose E is the voltage, E is the EMF induced voltage in the first connector, and this is the voltage which is induced in the last connector of the short pitch warning. The connection that you are going to prefer, and alpha is the angle between these two vectors. Then what is the resultant voltage? The resultant voltage is called as the by parallelogram principle. We can say E R is equal to angle to R E square plus E square plus two into E into E into cos alpha because alpha is the angle between these two vectors. So therefore, we can say clearly if this is the E and this is the E and alpha is the angle between them, then what is the resultant voltage as per the parallelogram principle, which is equal to resultant voltage is equal to angle to R E square plus E square plus two into E square into cos alpha. So if you simplify this equation, finally we are going to get two into E into cos alpha by two. So this is called as the the resultant EMF which is induced in the short pitch winding. So the resultant, we can say generally in the short pitch winding, the resultant voltage is equal to two E into cos of alpha by two, where alpha is the angle between the two induced voltages. Where alpha is the angle between the two induced voltages. So alpha is the angle between the two induced voltages. So alpha is nothing but basically alpha is nothing but one eighty minus. The angle between the the or you can say the mechanical angle between the two connectors or you can say the connectors which are we are going to connect. So listen carefully. Alpha is equal to 180 minus the mechanical angle between the connection of the connectors between the two slots. Between the two slots, the overall mechanical angle between the the connectors which are going to connect between the two slots. So alpha is equal to 180 minus 180 minus The overall mechanical angle between the two slots, we can say the two slots which you are going to connect them, which you are going to connect them. So this is a very important point that you always have to understand. So alpha is equal to 180 minus the overall mechanical, or we can say the overall slot angle or the overall mechanical angle. Anything is the same. The overall slot angle or the overall mechanical angle between the two slots which you are going to connect them. This is a very important point. So E R is equal to two into cos alpha by two is the the resultant voltage which you are going to induce in this short pitch winding. So now I'll discuss one point which is called as a K P. So K P. So K P is also called as a pitch factor, coil coil factor or the coiling factor. It's a very important point. So K P is also called as the pitch factor or the coil factor or the coiling factor. Coiling factor. These are the different names that are used for this K P. K P is also called as the pitch factor or the coiling factor or the Coiling factor. So K P is the ratio of it is the ratio of the EMF induced in short pitch coil. See, it is the EMF induced in the short pitch coil. It is a phasor sum because these are vectors of different directions, so we have to go for the phasor sum. Whereas EMF induced in the full pitch coil, in the full pitch coil, the all the connectors have the same amount of voltage in the same amount of direction. So therefore, we can say that. Just go for the arithmetic sum because they are all is vectors in the same direction. So you have to go for the arithmetic sum. Whereas the previous one, they have the same voltage but the direction is different. So you have to go for the resultant means go for the phasor sum or the vector sum. So K P is the ratio of the EMF induced in short pitch coil means go for the phasor sum by EMF induced in the full pitch coil, which is basically arithmetic sum. So K P is the ratio of the EMF induced in the short pitch coil because in a short pitch coil The conductor's voltage induces the conductor's same magnitude, but of different direction. So we have to go for the vector sum or the phasor sum. Whereas the EMF induced in the full pitch coil, it is basically they are going to have the same induced voltage in the same direction. So we have to go for the arithmetic sum. 
So Cape is equal to the EMF, the resultant EMF induced in the short bridge coil just now we have seen which is 2 E into cos of alpha by 2 by the EMF induced in the full pitch coil is 2 E. So 2 E to E cancels we are going to get cos alpha by 2. So Kp is called as A. So Kp is equal to cos of alpha by 2. I already told you what is alpha. Alpha is equal to 180 minus. So alpha is equal to 180 minus the overall mechanical angle between the two slots which you are going to connect them. So alpha is equal to 180 degree minus. Alpha is equal to 180 degree minus the overall mechanical or we can say the overall slot angle between the two slots which are going to connect them is a very important point that you always have to understand this important formula. So Kp is the call as the cos of alpha by 2 where alpha is called as the short pitch angle. See so alpha is called as the short pitch angle. So alpha is called as the, the definition of alpha is called as the short pitch angle. It depends upon the short pitch coil span. Yes, it is a dependable because if you change the coil span, this angle is also changes. So basically we can say it is, it is depend upon the coil span. It is depend upon the short pitch coil span because we are going to specifically understand about the short pitch winding. So we have to go for the short pitch coil span. So this alpha is called as the short pitch, short pitch angle. It depends upon the short pitch coil span. If you change the short pitch coil span, we can say simply in the short pitch winding, if you change the coil span, the alpha is going to get vary. So Kp is called as the pitch factor or the coil factor or the coding factor. And you have to always remember this. Cos alpha by 2 is always lesser than 1. So this value is always lesser than this value means this ratio is always lesser than 1 because this value the, num the denominator is always greater than the numerator. So this ratio is always lesser than 1. And one more important point is the EMF induced in the full pitch coil is always greater than the EMF induced in the short pitch coil. So therefore we are Kp is equal to cos of alpha by 2 where alpha is the short pitch angle it is always going to depend upon the coil span in the, in the short pitch winding we are going to use and Kp is called as the pitch factor or the coil factor or the coiling factor and alpha is equal to 180 degree minus the overall mechanical angle or the overall slot angle between the two slots which we are going to correct them. It is a very important point to always have to remember this concept. So remembering this important formula which is alpha is equal to 180 degree minus overall slot angle means the overall slot angle means simply we can say 90 degree minus the overall slot angle or the overall mechanical angle between the two slots that you are going to connect them. It is a very important point. So now we will discuss what is the effects of harmonics on the pitch factor. So what are the effects of the what are the effects of the harmonics on the pitch factor? So what are the effects of the harmonics on the pitch factor now we are going to study. So harmonics are I have already told you the classification of harmonics. See, harmonics are classified into two types. One is called as the even, the other one is the odd. Again, odd is again classified into three types. One is called as the 3m, where m is equal to odd. 3m minus 1, where m is equal to even. 3m plus 1, where m is equal to even. So, 3m, when m is equal to odd, it is basically, it is a triple m, triple m, triple, triple n harmonics. Triple m harmonics are triple n harmonics. 3m minus 1, basically, these are said to be negative sequence components whereas 3m plus 1 are said to be positive sequence components and the 3m are said to be geo sequence components. I have already told these important things in the induction machine itself. So harmonics we are going to consider only the odd harmonics but not the even harmonics because the flux waveform the flux waveform will not going to have the any even harmonics. It is going to have only the odd harmonics. So we are going to consider only the odd harmonics which are 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 17, 19, 19, 21. So these are the odd harmonics only we are going to consider because based on the graph of the voltage or we can say the flux Based on the graph of the flux, you can see clearly here harmonics are going to get zero, only the R harmonics are going to present. In the R harmonics, we are going to have zero sequence components, negative sequence components, and the partial sequence components. But the most dominant harmonics are the 5 and 7. So 5 and 7 are said to be most dominant harmonics because of these harmonics only. Crawling is going to get happen in the induction machine and order to do this important concept. Because of these two harmonics, because of this dominant harmonics are the 5 and 7 only, the induction motor is going to rotate at a very, very low speed which is nearly equal to ms by 7. 
that is called as the crawling. Even though you are going to give the radiated voltage and radiated supply, still it is going to rotate with a very low speed, which is equal to nearly equal to 1 by 7th of synchronous speed because of these dominant harmonics, which are the one most culprit of these harmonics, which are the 5th and 7th. These are the most dominant harmonics, which are the 5th and 7th harmonics. And the higher other harmonics are the 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. And the trivial harmonics I already told you, Trivial means you have to consider only the odd harmonics, which is multiple of 3. So, 3, 9, 15, 21, these are the trivial harmonics and which are odd in nature. So, therefore, we can say trivial harmonics, which are 3, 9, 15, and 21. So, dominant harmonics are the 5 and 7, and the higher odd harmonics are the basically 11, 13, 17, 19, and the trivial harmonics are the 3, 9, 15, and 21. So, you can see these are the trivial harmonics, these are the higher harmonics, and these are the dominant harmonics. So, if you remove the trivial harmonics from the dominant harmonics, what are the remaining frequencies are called as the higher other harmonics? So, if you remove the trivial harmonics from, so if you remove the dominant harmonics from the trivial harmonics, you are going to get called as the higher order harmonics. So, if you remove the dominant harmonics from the trivial harmonics, you are going to get the higher order harmonics. Dominant harmonics produces more magnitude of voltage by using short pitch winding. Our aim is to remove these dominant harmonics, which are called as the 5 and 7. So, basically, these dominant harmonics are going to produce more magnitude of voltage. So, they are going to produce more magnitude of voltage. And by using the short pitch winding, our aim is to remove these dominant harmonics of the 5 and 7. So, by the short pitch winding, we are going to remove these most dominant harmonics, which are called as the 5 and 7. Because of this 5 and 7 dominant harmonics, a more amount of voltage is going to get induced. So, because of that, the speed is going to get decreased. These dominant harmonics are going to produce more amount of voltage. And with the help of short pitch winding, we have to remove these dominant harmonics. This is our main agenda to remove these dominant harmonics with the help of this short pitch winding. So therefore, we are going to use the short pitch winding in such a manner, we are going to remove this dominant harmonics which are the 5 and 7 because they are going to produce the lower amount of magnetic voltage and they are going to distort the flux in the machine. That is the reason we have to remove them. So for nth harmonic, what is the electrical angle? So for nth harmonic, the electrical angle is equal to n into 180 degree. So, this is the general one. So, therefore, for nth harmonic, the electrical angle is nothing but n into 180. So, for nth harmonic, the electrical angle is n into 180. Similarly, same concept. So, therefore, the pitch factor. So, the pitch factor for nth harmonic. So, pitch factor or the coil factor or the coding factor for nth harmonic component is equal to cos of n alpha by 2. So, therefore, I have already told you what is alpha. Alpha is equal to 180 degree minus, 180 degree minus the overall, the overall slot angle between the slots which you are going to connect or the overall mechanical angle between the slots which you are going to connect. So, 180 minus the overall slot angle, the overall mechanical slot angle between the two slots that you are going to connect. This is an important point that you always have to remember. So, therefore, the nth or the pitch factor for the nth harmonic is cos of n alpha by 2. So, cos of n alpha by 2 is called as the pitch factor for the nth harmonic component. Simply, we can say Kp with the subscript of n. So, Kp with the subscript of n is called as the cos of n alpha by 2. It is called as the pitch factor for the nth harmonic component. So, it is basically the pitch factor for the nth harmonic component. So, now we are going to find the short pitch angle to eliminate the nth harmonic component of induced voltage in EMF by using the short pitch winding. I have already told you, finding the short pitch angle. So, finding the short pitch angle, see alpha. See, alpha is called the short pitch angle. I have already told you, alpha means the short pitch angle. So, therefore, finding the short pitch angle to eliminate the nth harmonic component of induced voltage in EMF by using the short pitch winding. So, each and every harmonic is going to get induced some amount of voltage. But the induction of this, the, in, the, induced, the induced of this voltage of the 7th and 5th harmonics is very higher. So, we have to remove them with the help of this short pitch angle. Then what is the short pitch angle for them to remove these harmonics? So, finding the short pitch angle to eliminate the nth harmonic component of induced voltage in EMF by using the short pitch winding. 
see for nth harmonic so for nth harmonic the emf induced is equal to 4.445 ft into kp into kd so this formula derivation i am going to discuss later but up to now just remember this small thing which is called as a emf the emf is induced because of nth harmonic component of flux is equal to 4.44 into 5 into frequency into turns per phase into the pitch factor the nth pitch factor into kd so the pitch factor of the pitch factor due to nth harmonic into kd i have already told you the pitch factor due to nth harmonic is equal to cos of n alpha by 2 so now i need to make this voltage as zero so whenever you make this voltage as zero this value is also equal to zero so cos of n alpha by 2 is equal to zero then cos is zero whenever the uh, the angle is equal to 90 degree so therefore n alpha by 2 is equal to 90 degree so alpha is equal to do the manipulation we are going to get 1 degree by 10 so therefore alpha is equal to 1 degree by 10 for alpha is called the short pitch angle alpha is basically an electrical angle it is because it is basically an electrical angle it is basically electrical angle because alpha is equal to 1 into 1 degree minus 1 into basically it is called the pole pitch angle pole pitch angle electrical angle is 1 degree so alpha is equal to 180 degree minus the overall slot angle the overall slot angle or the overall mechanical angle between the two slots that you are going to connect so basically alpha is going to give you about the electrical angle because pole which is nothing but 1 degree so alpha is equal to 1 degree minus the overall slot angle or the overall mechanical angle between the two slots that you are going to connect and the coil span is also basically we are going to get the electrical angle so electrical angle so therefore alpha is equal to 1 degree by n so this much amount of short pitch angle that you need to keep so therefore you have to you, have to, you are going to remove this n harmonic component so therefore finding the short pitch angle to eliminate the n harmonic component of induced voltage in emf by using short pitch winding because see Each and every harmonic is going to induce some amount of voltage, but seventh and fifth are going to induce more amount of voltage. Voltage, so we have to remove them. Then what is the general formula? The MF induced because of n harmonic component is equal to 4.44 into 5 into F into T into the n harmonic the n harmonic of the pitch factor into KD. So therefore, if this is zero, then the field this value is also equal to zero. So cos of n alpha by two is equal to zero. So n alpha by two is equal to 90 degree. So alpha is equal to 90 degree by n. So alpha is the Short pitch angle. It's always the unit is electrical angle. So therefore, we can say simply this much amount of short pitch angle is required to remove to eliminate this nth harmonic to eliminate this nth harmonic induced voltage. So this much amount of short pitch angle is required to eliminate this nth harmonic induced voltage. Then what is the coil span? Coil span is nothing but simply we can say see when alpha is equal to 180 minus see when alpha is equal to 180 minus coil span. So basically, we can say that this alpha is equal to 180 minus the overall slot angle between the two slots that you are going to count is called as this coil span. So therefore, if alpha is equal to 180 degree minus coil span, so coil span is equal to 180 minus alpha. So coil span is equal to 180 minus alpha is equal to 180 minus. What is the alpha? Same formula. 180 degree by n substitute here. So if you do the simplification, we are going to get the coil span angle is equal to. 180 degree into n minus 1 by n. So the unit of the coil span angle and the short pitch angle have the same thing. This called as electrical angle. So this is a very important part that you always have to remember. So therefore we can say clearly alpha is equal to 180 degree minus overall mechanical slot angle between the two slots that you are going to connect. Or this is called as basically alpha is equal to 180 minus coil span. Both are same. This is called as so alpha is equal to 180 degree minus overall slot angle. So this is the overall mechanical slot angle. It is also called as the coil span. So therefore, alpha is equal to 180. This is called as the pole pitch in terms of electrical angle. So alpha is equal to 180 degree minus overall slot angle, or we can say overall mechanical slot angle between the two slots that you are going to connect. It is also called as the coil span. So if alpha is equal to 180 minus coil span, then definitely coil span is also equal to 180 minus. Alpha, alpha is called as the short pitch angle, and coil span is the angle by which they are going to connect. The slots are going to get connect. So therefore, if the short pitch angle is called one degree by n, the coil span then coil span angle is called one degree minus alpha. So the number one degree minus alpha is nothing but one degree by n. So if we solve this one, we are going to get one degree into n minus one by n. To eliminate the fifth harmonic. 
So if you want to eliminate the fifth harmonic, then what is the short pitch angle? The substitute is equal to 5. We are going to get 1 degree by 5 is called as a 36 degree mechanical angle. So this much amount of 36 degree mechanical angle, we have to go for the so short pitch angle. This much amount of short pitch angle is required to eliminate the fifth harmonic induced voltage in the overall voltage. So to eliminate the seventh harmonic induced voltage, so therefore keep here n is equal to 7, we are going to get nearly 25.7 degree. So therefore, this much amount of short pitch angle is required to eliminate the 7th harmonic induced voltage. So if you want to eliminate both the 5th and the 7th harmonic, just go for the average of these two values which is equal to this uh, 36 plus 27.5 by 2, nearly you are going to get 30 degree. So nearly you are going to get 30 degree. And uh, what is the corresponding coin square angle for this case to remove both these harmonics? So uh, coin square angle is equal to 180 minus variety minus short pitch angle so 1 minus 30 is nothing but 150 degree so therefore 150 degree you can also write which is 5 by 6 into pole pitch because pole pitch is called as 180 so 5 by 6 into 180 means 6 into 630 30 into 50 is again 150 so therefore you can also write which is 5 by 6 into pole pitch so therefore you can see that if you want to remove if you want to eliminate both the fifth and the seventh harmonic induced voltages go for the average of these two values which is 36 plus 25.7 degree by 2 is nothing but 30 degree. If this is the amount of short pitch angle you need to uh, get to remove these two harmonics, then what is the coil span angle is equal to 180 is equal to 180 degree minus 30 degree is called as a 150 degree, which you can also call it as a 5 by 6 into pole pitch because the electrical angle of the pole pitch, the electrical angle of the pole pitch is called as the, the electrical angle of the pole pitch is 180 degree. So 5 by 6 into 180 is nothing but 150 degree. So therefore, you have to remember only these two formulas. The short pitch angle is equal to 1 degree by n and the coin square angle is equal to 1 degree into n minus 1 by n. So therefore, to eliminate the fifth harmonic, this substitute n is equal to 5, you are going to get 36 degree. If you eliminate the seventh harmonic, this substitute n is equal to 7, we are going to get 25.7 degree. If you want to eliminate both the fifth and the seventh harmonic, just go for the average of these two values, we are going to get 30 degree. So therefore, nearly are going to be 30 degree. So if this is the amount of 30 degree to eliminate both the fifth and seventh harmonic, then what is the corresponding coin span angle, which is equal to 1 to minus uh, 20 degree minus uh, short pitch angle is equal to 150 degree or simply we can write 5 by 6 into pole pitch. So as n increases, as n increases means simply we can say as n increases means as the harmonic increases. As the harmonic increases, then what happens to the pitch factor for the nth harmonic? Similarly, cos of n alpha by 2, as n increases, n alpha by 2 increases. So, cos value will decrease because as angle increases, cos function will decrease. So, therefore, the pitch factor will decrease. So, therefore, as the harmonics increases, as the harmonic number increases, the pitch factor corresponding to that harmonic will decrease. As the pitch factor decreases, so EMF induced for that harmonic is also going to decrease because E is directly proportional to nth harmonic pitch factor. As nth harmonic pitch factor itself decreases means the EMF induced because of how the harmonic is also going to get decrease. So as the as the harmonic number increases, the pitch factor corresponding to the harmonic will decrease. So EMF induced because of the harmonic is also going to get reduced. So when we choose full pitch coil, suppose if you go for the full pitch coil, if you go for the full pitch coil, it means that coil span is equal to full coil span is equal to pole pitch. So if you go for the full pitch coil means the coil span itself is equal to pole pitch, then the short pitch angle is nothing but 0 degree so because the short pitch angle is equal to 0 degree. So therefore, the short pitch angle is equal to 0 degree because alpha is equal to 1 degree minus coil span or 1 degree minus the overall slot angle between the two slots that you are going to connect. When the, for a full pitch winding, they definitely the coil span is equal to 180 degree. So 180 degree minus 180 degree is nothing but 0 degree. So therefore, alpha is equal to 0 degree. Then what is going to happen? As alpha is equal to 0, the pitch factor is always is equal to unity no matter what are the harmonic component. No matter what are the harmonic component, the pitch factor is always equal to 1 because alpha is equal to 0 degree. So therefore, whether it is a first harmonic, whether it is a fifth, third harmonic or whether it is a fifth harmonic, for all the cases, its value is equal to 1. So this condition is undesirable for AC alternator, but desirable for DC generator because, see, for AC generator, see, its value should, see, for AC generator, what is going to happen? 
all the armlets are going to get produced. If you go for the pull pitch winding, all the armlets are going to get there. If all the armlets are going to get present, the overall induced voltage is going to get degraded. You need only the fundamental component, but not the hard harmonics. So, you have to keep only the fundamental component and you have to remove all the hard harmonics you have to remove by some process. That is called the short pitch winding. That is the reason we are going to use the short pitch winding, but not the full pitch winding in the alternator. Because if you go for the alternator in the full pitch winding, all the harmonics are going to present. Because you can see clearly, all armors are going to present because the pitch factor for all armors is same which is unity. If the pitch factor is very high, the EMF unit is also very high because of the harmonics. The resultant voltage is going to get degraded. The resultant voltage is going to get degraded. It will be never a pure sound order. That is the reason we have to go for the short pitch finding. So because of this, we are going to remove all the harmonics. So only we are going to keep only the fundamental component. If we if we keep only the fundamental component by removing all the Remaining harmonics, then definitely the output will be pure sinusoidal. That is the case. Always we are going to use the short pitch winding in the alternator, but not the full pitch winding. This is a very important point that you always have to understand the concept behind this one. So if you go for the alternator with the full pitch winding, the pitch factor because of all the harmonics is equal to one because the short pitch winding is equal to zero. It means that. All the harmonics are going to present with the fundamental. If every harmonic is present, the overall flux or the overall EMF in the output of the armature will never be of the armature value will never be a pure sinusoidal. It will be degrading. You can see it's a non-sinusoidal. That is the reason we have to use the short pitch winding. Then we can remove all the dominant harmonics. Only the fundamental is going to present ideally. So therefore, the output will be pure sinusoidal. This is the important condition for alternator. So never use the full pitch winding for alternator. Only use the short pitch winding for alternator. This is the reason behind it. But it is desirable for DC generator. In a DC generator, we go for the full pitch winding. So this is a very important point. I have already told you. In a DC generator, we have to use the full pitch winding. Whereas in the AC generator, we have to use the short pitch winding. Because in full pitch winding, I have already told you what is going to happen. In full pitch winding, all the armors are going to present. In a DC generator, if you use the full pitch winding, all the armors are going to present in the unidirectional. All the things are going to present in the upper coordinate, only in the unidirectional. So all the things are going to get added up and you are going to get a constant voltage. So very important point, listen carefully. Here, in a DC, in a DC generator, if all the armors are going to present, what is going to happen? They are going to present only in the only first or we can say only about the time axis. See, I have drawn this figure to explain this concept. In a DC generator, if all the harmonics are present, what is going to happen? Let me assume this is the voltage which is induced because of first harmonic, and this is the induced voltage of because of third harmonic, and the other voltage under the graph for the other other harmonics. So if I add all these voltages, finally you are going to get a constant voltage in this manner. So this is the constant voltage that we are going to get finally. So because all the harmonic components are required to get a constant voltage in a DC generator. So therefore, we go for the full pitch winding in the DC generator and we go for the short pitch winding in the AC generator. I hope you can clear the concept behind this one. So in a DC generator, you need all the harmonic components and if this is a voltage induced because of first harmonic and this is the voltage induced because of third harmonic and the other graph may be because of the other harmonic. So therefore if I add all these harmonic voltages, the resultant voltage will be a constant waveform. This is desirable. So full pitch winding is used for the DC generator whereas the short pitch winding is used for the AC alternative because we need only the fundamental but not the remaining harmonics. That is the reason we go for the short pitch winding. So finally, I can conclude that short pitch winding is used for the AC alternator, whereas the full pitch winding is used for the DC generator. I have already explained the concept behind this reason also. And now we will discuss one important concept. Listen carefully here. Suppose let me assume a number of slots is equal to 18. The number of slots is equal to 18 on the stator. And the number of poles is equal to 2. And it is a three-phase system. So this is the 
we can say that this is the basic conditions and then we are going to analyze based on these conditions what is the consequences are going to happen. So I am going to assume the number of slots, the number of slots on the state are the 18 and the, the number of pools which I am going to wound, see with the help of this three phase, three phase system the number of pools which I am going to get is 2 and basically it is a three phase system. Then what is the meaning of pole pitch? I have already told you pole pitch. Pole pitch is the ratio of the total number of status slots by total number of poles in individual on the state R is equal to as there are 18 slots and 2 poles, 18 by 2 is equal to 9. So this is called as a pole pitch. Pole pitch simply we can say that the number of slots which are assigned for each and every pole is called as the pole pitch. So pole pitch is the ratio of the total number of slots by total number of poles which is 18 by 2 is equal to 9. And then slot angle, I have already told you the slot angle. Slot angle means we can say simply it is the slot angle means simply we can say it is basically the, the mechanical angle or we can say that it is a mechanical angle, it is a mechanical angle between the, it is a mechanical angle between the two slots, between the two adjacent slots. It is a mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots. As you can see clearly there are total 360 degrees and there are 18 slots. So 18. So 360 by 18 is how much? 20 degree. So therefore we can say that 360 by 18 is equal to 20 degree. So 20 degree is the angle between the two adjacent slots. So therefore I have already told you the important formula which is the slot angle is equal to 180 degree by pole pitch. 180 degree by pole pitch. 180 degree by pole pitch is 9. Just now we have calculated so 180 by 9 is again 20 degree. So you can calculate either in this manner or either in this manner. You are going to get the same result. But see this is a symbol. Beta is the symbol that I am going to assume. B, beta is the symbol which I am going to use for this slot angle. So this for the slot angle I am going to use beta. Beta is called the slot angle which I am going to use. It is called as the slot angle. It is a, it is basically the angle between the, the mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots in state are is called as the by slot angle. It is uh, the formula is 1 degree by pole pitch or simply 360 degree by total number of slots which are 18. Then what is the slots per pole per face? Slots per pole per face means in one pole per face how many number of slots are assigned? Means in a one face per one pole or simply we can say in a one pole per face how many number of slots are assigned for one face? The total number of slots are 18 and total number of poles are 2 and it is a 3 phase system. So 18 by 2 into 3 means simply we are going to get 3 because 18 by 6 is 3. So we, so we can say 3 slots, 3 slots are going to assign per 1. So and under 1 pole, 3 slots are, assi three slots are assigned for the 3 phase system for 1 phase. So therefore 3 slots are being assigned for 1 phase under 1 pole. That is the meaning of this one. So I am going to use a symbol which is called as the M. M is called as the slots per pole per is called as the slots per pole per face. Or simply we can say the number of slots under one pole which are assigned for one face is called as the M. So therefore now if I say clearly it is a two pole system. So the pole which is nine. So see for so these are the 18 slots. We can see clearly from 1 to 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there are 18 slots on the state. Out of that, the pole which is 9. So therefore, 9 slots for one pole and the 9 slots for the other pole because of the two pole system. So therefore, 9 slots for the pole 1 and then other 9 slots for the other pole. So this is for the south pole and this is for the North pole, as you can see clearly from here. And now, under one pole, under one pole, three slots. Under one pole, three slots for one face. So therefore, let me assume these three slots for the face A, these three slots for the face B, and these three slots for the face C. So you can see clearly these three slots for the face A, these three slots for the face B, and these three slots for the face C. So that is the meaning of M. So therefore, simply we can say that pole pitch is the ratio of the total number of slots by total number of poles and the, we can say that this M is the ratio of the slots per pole per face means the number of slots which are assigned per one pole for one face is called as the M. 
in the slot angle is represented by symbol beta which is 360 degree by total number of slots or simply we can say that it is a 180 degree by pole pitch. So you can use either formula you are going to get the same result. Similarly here also these three slots for the phase A, these three slots for the phase B and these three slots for the phase C. So let me assume the coil span is equal to full pitch and what I told you I am going to do the connection in such a manner which is a full pitch winding. So if I if I do the connection of the two slots in such a manner, if I go for the full pitch winding, I am going to assume coil span is equal to full pitch. I have already told you the full pitch is nothing but 9. So you have to connect from 1 plus 9 is equal to 10 because 10 minus 1 is 10 minus 1 is nothing but simply we can say that 9. So therefore simply we have to connect the connector in slot 1 to connector in slot 10. So we have to connect you so you have to connect the connector in slot 1 to connector in slot 10. So therefore 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. This calls the coil span. You can see clearly coil span is equal to full pitch which is equal to full or uh, pole pitch. So therefore it is called as the full pitch winding. So whenever the coil span is equal to pole pitch here, here it has to be actually not full pitch. Here it has to be pole pitch. Whenever the coil span is equal to pole pitch, then only we can say it is said to be a full pitch winding. So whenever the coil span is equal to pole pitch, here it has to be actually pole pitch, not full pitch. So whenever the coil span is equal to pole pitch, then only we can say it is said to be a full pitch winding. So coil span is equal to 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 because you have to connect the connector in slot 1 to connector in slot 10. So therefore 10 minus 1 is equal to 9, it is equal to pole pitch. So it is said to be a full pitch winding. So if you if you if you connect in slot 1 plus 9 is nothing but 10. So you have to connect the connect in slot 1 to connect in slot 10. And then again you have to take it to the slot 2. Again 2 plus 9 is equal to 11. Again go for the 3. So 3 plus 9 is equal to 12. So this is the correction that you have, you have to follow. So 1 plus 9 is equal to 10. Again go to the 2. Again 2 plus uh, 2 plus 9 is equal to 11. Again go for the 3 and 3 plus 9 is equal to 12. So in this manner you have to do the connection. In this manner you have to do the connection. So therefore you are going to get basically this type of connection is called as the full pitch winding or simply because the coil span is equal to pole pitch it is said to be a full pitch winding. So you have to connect you have to connect the connector in slot 1 plus 9 is equal to 10 means you have to connect the connector from in the slot 1 to slot 10 and then slot 10 to slot 2. Again slot 2 to slot 11 again slot 11 to slot 3 again slot 3 to slot 12. So this is the manner you have to do the connection. So basically it is said to be it is said to be is nothing but simply we can say that this type of connection is called as the this type of connection is called as a full pitch winding. So you have to connect the connector in slot 1 to connect in slot 10 and then go for the slot 2 connection from slot 2 to slot 11, slot 11 again go from slot 11 to slot 3 again from slot 3 to slot 12. This type of connection is called as the full pitch winding. Then what is the phase belt? Phase belt is also called as the phase band or the phase group. So phase belt is also called as the phase belt is also called as the phase belt is also called as the phase band or the phase group is equal to m into beta. So it is called as the m into beta. So it is called as the m into beta. So therefore here m is called as the one to you these number of slots are which are assigned for one point per one phase into beta is called as the slot angle. So you have to do the multiplication of these two things. It is called as the phase belt or the phase band or the phase group or simply we can say this much amount of angle is being covered by one phase under one pole. That, that is the meaning of this one. This much amount of a mechanical angle which is this is this much amount of mechanical angle which has been covered which has been covered by the one phase under one pole which is m into beta. So m is equal to 3 and beta is equal to uh, beta is equal to 20 degree. So 3 is 20 degree is equal to 60 degree. It is called as a phase frame. So therefore 60 degree so 60 degree is the phase plane which has been taken by for one phase per one pole per one slot. So therefore we can say that simply this is the meaning of this one. So therefore phase belt or the phase band or the phase group is equal to m into beta. Here m is called as the ratio of the slots per pole per phase and beta is called as a slot angle, mechanical slot angle. So m into beta. So therefore we can say that here m is 3 and beta is 20. So 3 into 20 is called 60 degree. So 60 degree is the phase plane. As you can see clearly, 
three slots have see three slots have been used for winding. So three slots have been used for winding. So three slots have been used for winding for one phase. So each has a twenty degree. So three into twenty is nothing but sixty degree. So sixty degree square is the phase spread. On which means this much amount of angle is being covered by one phase for one phase for one pole. So phase spread for the n phase system. So what is the phase spread for n phase system? So phase spread for n phase system is one degree by n. It's a very important formula that you always have to remember. The phase spread for the n phase system is equal to one eighty by n. For single phase, the phase spread is equal to one eighty by one because n is equal to one. It is one eighty degree. And for two phase, the phase spread is equal to one eighty by two is equal to ninety degree. And for three phase, the phase spread is One eighty by three is equal to sixty degree. So these are the things that you always have to remember. So phase spread for n phase system is equal to one eighty by n, and for single phase the phase spread is equal to one eighty by one is equal to one eighty degree, and for two phase the phase spread is equal to one eighty by two is equal to ninety degree, and for three phase the phase spread is equal to one eighty by three is equal to sixty degree. So this is the important formula that you always have to remember. So for The phase spread for n phase system is equal to one eighty by n. So for n for one phase system, the phase spread is this substitute n is equal to one. We are going to get one eighty degree. And for two phase system, the phase spread is this substitute n is equal to two. You are going to get one eighty by two is equal to ninety degree. And for three phase, the phase spread is equal to one eighty by three is equal to sixty degree. So this is the sixty sixty degree that we have got for the three phase system. Just now we have seen this case. So this is the general formula that you have to that you have to remember. So for n phase system, for each phase, for each phase, this much amount of phase spread is required. So for n phase system, this this is the, the this meaning is simply indicates that for for n phase system, the amount of the the overall mechanical angle which is covered by under one pole per one phase. So simply this means that under one pole under one phase. The amount of mechanical angle which is covered by one phase is called as the. This is 180 by n. So for n phase system, the phase spread is 180 by n, and for single phase system, the phase spread is 180 degree, and for two phase system, the phase spread is 90 degree, and for three, three phase system, the phase spread is 60 degree. So 60 degree is the case that we are going to discuss up to now. For three phase system with respect to winding connection, we get two phase spreads. They are 180 degree is called as a wide phase spread. And the third degree is called as the narrow phase spread. So in a three-phase connection, we are going to get two types of phase spreads based on the type of based on the type of winding arrangement that you are going to do. We are going to get two types of phase spread. So one hundred degree is called as a wide phase spread, and the third degree is called as a narrow phase spread. These two things that we are going to discuss. But initially, we are going to discuss about the sixty degrees. Then later, we are going to study about the one hundred degree also. In a very detailed manner. So, for three-phase system with respect to winding arrangement, we are going to get two types of phase spreads. They are 180 degrees, which is also called as the wide phase spread, and 60 degree, which is called as the narrow phase spread. So, for a three-phase system with respect to winding arrangement, we are going to get two types of phase spreads. They are 180 degree, which is called as the wide phase spread, and 60 degree, which is called as the narrow phase spread. So, in a three-phase system, that we are going to get. With respect to winding connection, we are going to get two types of phase spreads. One is called as the 120 degree wide phase spread and 60 degree narrow phase spread. But initially, now we are going to study 60 degree, which is called the narrow phase spread, and later we are going to study about the 120 degree wide phase spread. So m is equal to one. So m is equal to one. Whenever the m is equal to one, it is said to be concentric winding. But whenever the m is greater than one, it is called as a distributed winding. It's a very important thing that you always have to remember. So whenever the m is equal to one, it is said to be concentric winding. So whenever the m is greater than one, we are going to study about it. It is called as a distributed winding. Concentric winding is always used in the transformer, and distributed winding is used in the remaining machines except the transformer. So whenever the m is equal to one, it is said to be concentric winding. And whenever the m is greater than one, it is called as a distributed winding. So whenever the m is equal to one, it is called as a concentric winding. And whenever the m is greater than one, it is called as a distributed winding. So now you can see clearly. Now I am going to do something which is very much important that you always need to understand. I am already told you one important point, which is there are two. There are basically eighteen slots. 
So slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six, slot seven, slot eight, slot nine, slot ten, slot eleven, slot twelve, slot thirteen, slot fourteen, slot fifteen, slot sixteen, slot seventeen, and slot eighteen. So there are eighteen slots. So we are going to keep the eighteen conductors. So now I already told you the pole which is nine because the pole which is the ratio of the total number of slots by total number of poles. Slots are eighteen, poles are two. So eighteen by two is nine. So nine slots for the one pole and remain nine slots for the another pole. And I already told you m m is the ratio of slots per pole per face. We are going to get which is eighteen by two into three is a thing but eighteen by six. Eighteen by six is equal to three. So three slots per one pole. So three slots per one pole are called as the one face. So in a, for a for one pole we are going to use three slots for one face. So under one pole. We are going to use the three slots for one phase. Remember, under one pole, we are going to use three slots for one phase. So this is called as the phase A, phase B, and phase C. Here also, this is called as the phase A. These are for phase B, and these are for phase C. I have already told you, I am going to use the full pitch winding. Full pitch winding means I am going to use only the full pitch winding. So full pitch winding means I have to do the connection from here one. One plus nine is equal to ten. So we have to go from one to ten. Again, go from two. Again, two plus nine is equal to eleven. Then again, go to three. Again, three plus nine is equal to twelve. So this is the connection that you are going to do. So this is the starting and this is the ending terminal. This is the starting terminal and this is the ending terminal. I have already told you m is the value three. Here m is greater than one. So it is called as the distributed winding. So this is called as the distributed winding. Basically, it is a full pitch winding. But we have we see under one pole we have more than one tone, so therefore it is called as the distributed winding. So it is called as the distributed winding. This is called as the distributed winding. Then what is the meaning of concentric winding? So how do you do for concentric winding? Now I will discuss here. See, I have already told you one important point. Suppose if I keep these three conductors, if I keep these three conductors in slot one. Suppose if I keep these three connectors in slot one and these three connectors in another slot one, so therefore, see one, two, three. If I keep these three connectors in slot one and similarly this ten, eleven, twelve, if I keep these three connectors in again one individual slot, then this type of connection is called as a concentric winding. See, if they keep on different slots, if you go for the different slots of connection, it is called as distributed winding. But if they keep in the same winding, if they keep they keep in the same slot, it is called as the concentric winding. This is a very important point. So suppose if these three connectors are, are kept in different slots, then it is called as the distributed winding. If the three slots, if the three connectors are kept in one single slot, it is said to be it is said to be a concentric winding. This is a very important point. So if you Collect all these terminals. If you collect all these connected coil sides, basically, basically it is a one coil. So in this coil, these are called as the coil sides. So if you collect all these coil sides and if you keep it in a one single slot, it is called as the it is called as the concentric winding. Similarly, if you collect all these coil sides and if you keep in a one slot in a one single slot, it is called as the concentric winding. But if you keep all these coil coil sides in a different in a different slots. Then it is said to be distributed winding. So whenever you keep the, whenever in a coil, if you keep the coil sides in a different slots, then it is said to be uh, distributed winding. But if you keep all the coil sides in a one single slot, it is said to be concentric winding. This is a very important point that you always need to analyze. So therefore, for a for a one coil, if you keep all this, if you keep all these coil sides together in a one single slot. You can see clearly this is a one slot. I kept all all these three coil slots in a one single slot. It is said to be a concentric winding. Similarly, same procedure. I have connected all these coil slots and I kept in a one single slot. So it is said to be concentric winding. Whereas in the previous case, all these coil slots are kept in three different slots. So it is said to be distributed winding. So you can see clearly here. I kept all the coil sides in a different slots, so it is said to be distributed winding. If I keep all the coil sides in a one single slot, it is said to be a concentric winding. This is a very important point that you always need to analyze and that you always need to understand. So whenever for a given coil, if you keep all the coil sides in a one single slot, 
one single slot, it is said to be concentric winding. Otherwise, if you keep all the coin slots in different slots, then it is said to be a distributed winding. So, let me discuss which is another important concept which is called as the distributed factor. So, in the previous case, we have learned about the pitch factor. Pitch factor is the case. So, pitch factor is going to come only if you go for the short pitch. If you go for the short pitch winding, then the concept of pitch factor is going to come. Whereas, the distribution factor is going to come whenever you go for the concept of distributed winding. So, listen carefully. Whenever you go for the concept of short pitch winding, the pitch factor is the case which you are going to get. Otherwise, if you go for the full pitch winding, but it is a basically distributed winding, and then it is said to be called as the distrib when this distributed factor is going to come into the case. So therefore, KD is called as the distributed factor or the spread factor or the break factor. So KD is called as the distributed factor or the spread factor or the break factor. So these are the three different names for this KD. So KD is called as the distributed factor or the spread factor or the break factor. So KD is called as the distributed factor or the spread factor or the breadth factor. So, what is the KD? KD is the ratio of the, KD is the ratio of the EMF which is induced in distributed winding per phase, it is a phase or sum, whereas EMF which is concentric winding per phase, it is a, it is a basically arithmetic sum. So, KD is the ratio of the EMF induced in distributed winding per phase, it is a basically phase or sum or vector sum by the ratio of the EMF induced in concentric winding per phase, but it is basically arithmetic sum. So, we can say that KD is nothing but it is the ratio of the EMI which is induced in the distributed winding. In the distributed winding, the, it is a ratio of the EMI which is induced in the distributed winding per phase. It is, a base, it is basically a vector sum or the arithmetic sum by the ratio of the EMI which is induced in the concentric winding per phase. It is an arithmetic sum. So, therefore, KD is the ratio of the EMI which is induced KD is the ratio of the EMA which is induced in the distributed winding per phase. It is a vector sum or phase or sum by the EMA which is induced in the concentric winding per phase. It is a arithmetic sum. So, always this ratio is always lesser than 1 because the EMA which is induced in the concentric winding per phase is always greater than the EMA which is induced in the distributed winding per phase. Let me understand this important concept here. Distributed winding of one phase under one pole. So, distributed winding of one phase under one pole. So, distributed winding of one phase under one pole. So, let me assume under one phase or we can say under one pole, under one phase, these many number of slots are going to come together. So, therefore, this 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me assume, see on all these four slots, I am going to use the same type of phase A. Let me assume the phase is A. So, therefore, we can say it is said to be distributed binding. See, I have kept all this. This is basically one, one coil. In this one coil, I have kept these four coil sets in the four different slots. So, it is said to be a distributed binding. So, distributed binding of one phase under one pole. So, under one pole, under the one phase. So, under one pole, in a one phase, we are going to use, for example, four types of slots. So, for, for, for one phase, then we are going to analyze how much amount of EMA which is induced in this distributed winding of one phase under one pole. So, here let me assume this is, the, this is a slot A or slot B and slot C and slot D. Let me take a reference voltage, the reference point as O. And if you can see clearly this is the point A graph, this is a point B, this is a point C and point D. So, now we can say that here OA, OA is called as the induced voltage in the first connector and OB is called as the, the induced voltage in the second connector and OC is called as the induced voltage in the third connector and OD is called as the EMA which is induced in the fourth conductor. All these characters are going to come under one phase but they are kept in the four different slots. It is called as the distributed winding. So, OA is called as the EMA which is induced in the first conductor in the first slot and OB is the OB is the induced voltage in the second conductor and the second slot and OC is the induced voltage in the third conductor per third slot and OD is the induced voltage in the fourth conductor per fourth slot. Then, then if you do the connection from A to D, if you do the connection from the A to D, this line, this vector 
is called as the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So we can say that this if you do the connection from A to D, it is called as the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So this AD is called as the this AD is called as the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So if you do the if you do this if you draw a straight line from A to D point, this is called as the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So if you do the if you, if you join this A and B points, this straight line is called as the, the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So if you draw a straight line connecting this A and B, it is called as the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. So OA is the uh, induced voltage in the first conductor, OV is the induced voltage in the second conductor and OC is the induced voltage in the third conductor and OD is the induced voltage in the fourth conductor and AD is the resultant induced voltage across the first and the fourth conductor. See, I have already told you an important point which is these are two slots and I have already told you the mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots is called as the angle beta. Angle beta is also called as the slot angle or simply we can say it is a mechanical angle between the two adjacent slots. So therefore, the angle between the vector OA and the vector OB is called as the beta. Similarly, the angle between the OB vector and the OC vector is beta. And similarly, the angle between the OC vector and the OD vector is again beta. So if you want to find what is the overall angle between the OA vector and the OD vector, which is nothing but M into beta because M are the M is called as a phase plane into beta because the M times of phase plane is the overall angle between the first conductor and the last conductor. So therefore, under one phase. So M into beta is the overall phase plane between the OA and the OB OD vector. So M B M B M beta is the overall phase plane between the OA and the OD. So this much amount of angle is being covered by one phase under one pole. So M beta M beta means it is a it is an angle for which it is an angle for which one phase has been covered under one phase. That is the meaning or that is the consequence of this one. Then what I am going to do basically is this is a triangle. So O J D is a triangle. So from O I am going to draw. I am going to draw which is called as the I am going to draw which is called as it is basically O A vector and the O D vector of same length. Then it is basically an isosceles triangle. Then I am going to draw a perpendicular line and then I am going to draw a perpendicular line to this O D A D vector. Let me assume this point is P. As it is it, it, in a in a basically in a isosceles triangle, this angle is going to get bisect or we simply we can say it is an angular bisector. So perpendicular is also equal to angular bisector. So this perpendicular line is basically is going to bisect this angle into two parts equal parts which is m beta by 2 and m beta by 2 because it is an isosceles triangle. So in an isosceles triangle, the perpendicular is nothing but basically it is going to bisect the overall angle into two equal parts which is m beta by 2 and this is m beta by 2. So now I am going to do some simplification to get the value of the overall overall AB. So if I take this triangle, if I take this simple triangle J O P, so this is the perpendicular, so this is the angle M beta by 2. Then what is the sign? Sign is equal to opposite by this is opposite by so this is called as the opposite by hypotenuse, which is sign of M beta by 2 is equal to AB by AO sin of m beta by 2 is equal to a p by a o. So, sin of m beta by 2 is equal to a p by o a o. So, sin of this angle is equal to this angle by this length by this length. So, sin of m beta by 2 is equal to which is a p by a o. Then what is the value of a p? a p is equal to a o or o a into sin of m beta by 2. So, sin of this angle is equal to this length by this length. So, a, so sin of m beta by 2 is equal to a p by a o. So, AP is equal to AO into sin of M beta by 2. Whereas, what is the AP? AP is equal to AB by 2. It is all because it is a, see, it is called as a perpendicular. It is going to bisect this length into two equal parts. So, therefore, we can, it is, it is as well as triangle. So, therefore, this perpendicular is going to bisect this length into two equal parts. So, AB is equal to AD by 2. So, this is the thing that, that uh, this is the thing that I have already told. AB is equal to OA into sin of M beta by 2. But AB is equal to AB by 2. So, AB by 2 is equal to OA into sin of M beta by 2. So, take 2 here. We are going to get AD is equal to 2 times of 
all here into sine of n beta by 2. This is for the resultant induced voltage per phase, per phase for distributed winding. So therefore, this is for distributed winding. Then what is first called concentric deep winding? Just go for the a, m into a, a b. So m into a b. So m into a b is called as the m into a b. m into a b is called as the for concentric winding. So m into a b is called as the m into a b is called as the for the concentric winding. So because we have to do the arithmetic sum, which is m into a b. So you can see clearly here this is a b. So there are you have to add all these vectors. It's the, in this case, it is, it is a arithmetic sum. You have to add all this A, B, B, C, C, D. If you can see clearly, this, this length and the th this length are same. If these two lengths are same, then definitely this length is also same for each and every triangle. So, this length, this length, this length, all these lengths are same. As there are M, so M into A, B is nothing but just it is a, it is a uh, arithmetic sum from A to D. Just A, B plus B, C plus C, D is nothing but See, there are 3, so 3 into AB or simply M into AB generally. So, for the general case, M into AB. So, therefore, the arithmetic sum is equal to M into AB for the concentric winding. So, this is for the concentric winding. So, this is the, we can say, the resultant EMF which is induced per phase for concentric winding, which is M into AB, whereas the resultant induced voltage per phase for distributed winding is 2 into OA into sine of M beta by 2. So now KD. So what is the value of KD? I have already told you KD. KD is the ratio of the. So KD is the ratio of the EMA which is induced per phase per distributed winding fall. EMA which is induced per phase in concentric winding. So therefore, the EMA which is induced in the distributed winding is AD. So AD. Whereas EMA which is induced, the EMA, the EMA which is EMA which is induced per phase in concentric winding is N into A beta. In, in into AB. These things I have already told you. So AD is the uh, resultant voltage which is induced per phase in the student winding and M into AB, M into AB is nothing but it is the resultant voltage which is induced per phase by concentric winding. So AD is just, just now we have calculated which is 2 into OA into sine of M beta by 2 and here M into AB, AB is nothing but AB, I have already told you M into AB. Then how to get the AB? So, AB is also same principle, which is again, use the same principle, sin of M beta by 2 is equal to AB by OA. So, sin of beta by 2. See, basically, now I want to find what is the overall length AB. Suppose if I want to find this overall length AB, see, simply draw a perpendicular bisector, or same principle, it is also an isosceles triangle. So, draw a perpendicular bisector from here. So, this is angle is AB. So, ABO, for this triangle, I am going to draw the angle bisector. So, beta by 2, beta by 2. So, sin of beta by 2 is equal to A, some point, let me term, this is AX. So, AX by AO. So, AX is equal to AO into sin of beta by 2. But I want AB into 2. So, therefore, so therefore 2 into OA. So, AB is equal to 2 into OA into sin beta by 2. So, this is the thing that I am going to use for this one. So, now AB is equal to 2 into OA into sin beta by 2. So, therefore, now, 2, 2 cancels, OA, OA cancels. Finally, we are going to get sin into sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, this is called as the KD. KD is also called as the distribution factor. Or simply, it is also called as the, it is also called as the distribution factor. Or simply, we can say it is called as the spread factor. Or simply, it is also called as the breadth factor. These are the different names for this KD. So, this formula that you need to always remember, which is KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, just take this m out, outside. So, you are going to get like this. KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, this is called as the distribution factor. So, KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, very important formula that you always need to analyze because there are a lot of questions which have been asked in different AE examinations based on this formula. So, I am recommend you to remember this important formula which is KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So, here beta is called as a slot angle. It is a mechanical slot angle between the two slots. Its formula is 
स्लॉट एंगल बाय पोल पिच और कैन सी इट इज अन डिग्री बाय पोल पिच और सिंपली थ्री एच डिग्री बाय टोटल नंबर ऑफ स्लॉट्स और इफ यू यू वांट टू यूज द एम एम इज कॉल्ड एज अ फेस स्प्रेड एम इज कॉल्ड एज अ बेसिकली इट इज अ फेस स्प्रेड एम इज कॉल्ड एज अ रेशियो ऑफ द स्लॉट्स पर पोल पर फेस ऑल दिस इज आई वांट टू यू सो बी गाइस इज कॉल्ड एज अ स्लॉट एंगल द फार्मूला इज 180 डिग्री बाय पोल पिच और सिंपली थ्री एच डिग्री बाय टोटल नंबर ऑफ स्लॉट्स यू कैन यूज इधर any of these things so the m m is called as the m is called as slots per pole per face all these things i only to in this case but now this is called as the for nth harmonic so for nth harmonic what is the case what is the for nth harmonic what is the distributive or okay, we can say what is the for nth harmonic what is the distribution factor so this is not distortion factor this is called as distribution factor have it in a wrong case It is just the nth harmonic distribution factor. So therefore, just replace beta by n beta. Whereas the pitch factor, we have replaced alpha by n alpha. Here we have to replace beta by n beta, and remaining everything is same. So for the nth harmonic distribution factor is equal to just replace beta by n beta. You are going to get this formula. So if you replace the beta by n beta, you are going to get the nth harmonic distribution factor. This is not distortion. This is called as the distribution factor so now let me tell you one important point so what is the emf which is induced because of this nth harmonic i have already told one important point which is the emf which is induced because of nth harmonic component is equal to which is 4.44 into 5 into f into t into this kbn into kdn kbn is called as the nth harmonic of pitch factor and kdn is called as the nth harmonic of the distribution factor all these things i have already told Told this one, so therefore you can say this K B N is called as the nth factor of it is nth harmonic of pitch factor and K B N is called as nth harmonic of distribution factor. All these things I already told you. So now here, see, I want to remove, I want to remove the harmonic voltage because of this nth harmonic distribution factor. So I want to remove whatever the whatever the harmonics because of this harmonics i am going to get some type of induced voltage i want to remove this one because i want to make the output in a in a is divided as two sides so then i want only the fundamental but not the remaining harmonics so remaining harmonics i should equal to zero so with the help of this one i am equal to this to zero i already told you the the numerator is nothing but and no denominator is zero because zero and anything is zero so numerator numerator i should equal to zero so sin of m into n beta by 2 is equal to zero so therefore here sin 180 is nothing but zero so therefore m into n beta by 2 is equal to 180 degree so m beta is equal to 360 by n so m beta is nothing but it is called as a phase spread so phase spread i have already told you which is 360 by n so phase spread m into m into m into beta is called as a 360 by n So this is a phase for diagonal to eliminate the nth harmonic component in induced voltage. So this much amount of phase spread is required for one phase under one pole if you want to remove that corresponding harmonic voltage. So this much amount of phase spread is required under the distributed winding if you want to eliminate that harmonic with the if you want to eliminate that harmonic because it is going to induce the voltage. So because of that that there is a All in all, that there will be no pure sinusoidal voltage. So if you remove this one, then only we are going to get a pure fundamental, or simply we are going to get a pure sinusoidal. So therefore, this much amount of phase spread under one phase, under one pole per one phase, it is required to eliminate that harmonic. So if the phase spread diagonal to eliminate the nth harmonic component in the induced voltage. So now, this is the m beta n, or simply we can say that phase spread for eliminating the nth harmonic. So Phase spread for eliminating the nth harmonic component in induced voltage. Same thing every time. Suppose if we want to remove the third harmonic, then this is equal to 3 is nothing but 120 degree. So 120 degree is the phase spread is required to eliminate the third harmonic. So 120 degree is the phase spread is required to eliminate the third harmonic. So in the design of alternator by providing the wide phase spread, which is 120 degree. Third harmonic component is eliminated. I want to tell this point. So therefore, if you want to eliminate the third harmonic component from the overall induced voltage, then you have to use a phase spread of 360 by 3 is nothing but 120 degree for one phase under one pole. Then only you are going to eliminate that third harmonic induced voltage. So in the design of alternator, by providing a wide phase spread, because in a three phase 120 degree is also called as a wide phase spread, and 60 degree is called as a narrow phase spread. So with the help of this. Wide phase spread of 120 degree, we are going to eliminate the third harmonic component. 
Okay, if you keep n is equal to 6, if you keep n is equal to 6, then you are going to get 60 degree. So, with the help of 60 degree that you are going to eliminate the 6th harmonic component. So, if you keep n is equal to 60, then the ratio is 60 by 6 is nothing but 60 degree. So, therefore, you are going to eliminate the nth harmonic, 6th harmonic induced voltage. So, with the help of 60 degree wide spread, with the help of 60 degree narrow spread, we are going to eliminate the 6th harmonic component. I have already told you what is the formula of M. M is called as the slots per pole per phase. So don't use this to find M. If phase speed is given, then use M beta to find M. So don't use this to find M. If phase speed is given, then use M beta to find M. Suppose in the question, if they give phase speed, then directly use this formula M into beta. Phase speed is nothing but M into beta. So in the questions, if they give the phase speed, then, then use this m into beta to calculate the value of m, but don't use the general expression which is slots per pole per phase. It's a very important thing that you always need to understand. So m, see if in the questions, if they give you phase spread, then use the m into beta to calculate that value of m, but you don't, don't use the general expression which is slots per pole per phase. So don't use this general formula to find m in the question if they give you phase spread. Instead of that, use this m beta to calculate the m. So, n is equal to 1 is called as a fundamental. So, n is equal to 1 is called as a fundamental component. See, as the num as the n increases, means as the harmonic number increases, all is going to happen. As the n harmonic increases, then kVn decreases because sine of n beta by 2, but the denominator is higher than the numerator. So, denominator is higher than the numerator. Or simply we can say that whenever the n increases, whenever the n increases, angle increases. So, therefore, sine of angle also increases. So, but the, in the denominator, the denominator, the, we can say that is always greater than the numerator. So, its ratio will be always lesser. So, therefore, it is going to decrease. So, if KBN decreases, then definitely E N also decreases. So, simply we can say that if the nth harmonic, the nth harmonic increases, then the denominator of KBN is more than numerator. So, its ratio decreases. So, therefore, the E M is induced because of that harmonic will decrease. This is a very important thing that you need to understand. So, for concentric winding, I already told you M is equal to 1. Concentric winding means we have kept all the characters in a single slot. Then it is a great concentric winding. Then M is equal to 1. If M is equal to 1, what is going to happen? KD is nothing but it is always equal to 1. Because no matter whatever the harmonic component, KD is always equal to 1 when M is equal to 1. So, whenever the for concentric winding, no matter whatever the things, always you are going to get KD as 1 irrespective of the harmonic component. So therefore, see, if you use the concentric winding, if you use the concentric winding, you are going to get each and every harmonic. You are going to get each and every harmonic in the output. So overall what is going to get destroyed, it will be never pure science. So that, that is the reason, never use the concentric winding. Never use the concentric winding in the alternator. Or simply we can say that, never use the concentric winding. Always use the distributed winding. So always use the distributed winding. So therefore we can eliminate the harmonies, whatever the things which we don't want. And then we are going to get a pure sinusoidal. So short pitch and also the short pitch and also the concentric winding is preferred in case of the alternator. So short pitch and also the short pitch and also the, the, the short pitch and also this one, which is called as the uh, concept, the distributed winding is preferred to get the full size total output voltage in an alternator. So now we discuss one more important concept in this one which is called as the KV reading of alternator is always directly proportional to KD because KV is nothing but KV is equal to the product of the voltage and current. Here voltage means EMF which is induced because the supply voltage is nearly equal to EMF induced. So EMF is directly proportional to the distribution factor so kd so kd is called as the distribution factor so we can say that the k rating of the alternate is directly proportional to emf induced and emf induced is directly proportional to the distribution factor so therefore indirectly we can say that the k v rating of the alternate is always directly proportional to the distribution factor similarly the power power c k v rating which is a complex power so therefore, what is the power? Power is nothing but active power is also highly proportional to KD because whenever the KD rating increases, the active, the active power is also increases. So we can say in the same manner, the active power output is of the alternator is highly proportional to the KD. Similarly, EMF induced which is 
the perfect EMA which is induced in the heart rhythm is directly proportional to the product of the KD and TPH. KD is called as the distribution factor and TPH are called as the turns per phase. So these are the three important, three important relations that you always need to understand this one which is the KD reading of the heart rhythm is always directly proportional to the distribution factor. Similarly the output power of the heart rhythm is also directly proportional to its distribution factor and the EMF per phase is also directly proportional to the, the product of distribution factor and the turns per phase. So these are the three important relations. So based on this, we are going to learn some important things based on these three individual concepts. I already told you for a three phase system, the narrow phase spread is called as a 60 degrees and the wide phase spread is called as a 100 degrees. I already told for n phase system, for n phase system, the phase spread is 180 by n. I already told this concept, the phase spread for n phase system is 180 by n. So if you substitute n is equal to 1, single phase system. If you substitute n is equal to 2, we are going to get two phase system. If you substitute n is equal to 3, we are going to get three phase system. So three phase spread. So therefore, we are going to get 120 degrees for wide spread and 60 for the narrow phase spread. So with the elbow wide spread, I have already told you, whenever we go for the wide, wide phase, phase spread, we are going to eliminate the third harmonic component, third harmonic component in the induced voltage in the overall voltage. So we can say this is a very important thing. So now based on these three individual concepts which is KV reading of the heart rate is always directly proportional to the distribution factor and the act output power of the heart rate is also directly proportional to the distribution factor. Similarly, the EMF induced per phase in a heart rate is directly proportional to the distribution factor in terms per phase. So now we are going to do the ratio of the, the ratio of the KV rating. If you go for 60 degree phase frame, to the ratio of the 1 degree phase spread for a 3 phase system. Then you will see in which phase spread the EMA which is induced it will be higher. So what is that ratio that we are going to see now. I have already told you the KV rating, the KV rating is either proportional to the distribution factor. So therefore go for this one KD of 60 degree KD by 1 degree. So this is for KD for 60, 60 degree phase spread and this is for the 1 degree phase spread. So, I have already told you the formula of the KD. So, KD is nothing but simply sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. I have already told this formula. So, therefore, now here m beta means it is a phase spread. So, m beta means here it is 60 degree. So, go for 60 here. And similarly, this is the phase spread, the m for the 60 degree phase spread. And this is sin of beta by 2 by. Then, this is for KD, same formula. Just replace m beta by 120 and here, here m for 120 and we will get the same. So therefore if we do simplification of these two things, finally we are going to get sin 30 by sin 60 into the m value, m value for 1 degree phase spread by m value for the 60 degree phase spread. So if you know these two values, you can easily simplify and you can easily tell in which phase spread we are going to get the huge amount of KVA. These things now we are going to see how to do the simplification of this one. Now I am going to do the simplification of this one. So before this, let, let me tell you. So let me do some important example to understand this concept of simplification. So let me tell you a small important uh, example. Through by this, we can understand what is the ratio of this one. Suppose let me assume the slots are 18. Same thing which you have learned in the previous case. The slots are 18 and the number of poles are 2. It's a three phase system. Then what is the value of beta? See, beta is called as the slot angle or mechanical slot angle which is 1 degree by pole pitch. 1 degree by pole pitch. Pole pitch is total number of slots per pole which is 18 by 2. So 180 by 18 by 2 is nothing but 6. So 180 by 6 is called as a 20 degree. 18 by 2 is 9. So 180 by 9 is nothing but 20 degree. So 20 degree is the slot angle between the two adjacent slots on the stator. Then I have already told you one important point which is phase speed is called as the m into beta. So m into beta is called as the phase speed. Phase speed means for this much amount of angle the number of slots which are going to bond for one phase. That is the meaning of this one. So therefore m into beta is equal to for 60 degree phase speed it is, it is equal to 60 degree. So therefore now the beta value we know which is 20 degree. So 60 by 20 is nothing but 3. So therefore the phase spread, the m value for 60 degree phase spread is 3. Similarly, for the phase spread 120 degree, for 120 degree phase spread, the value is m into beta. So, m for 
M is the value for 1 degree phase plane. I have already told you B is 20 degree, so 120 by 20 is nothing but 6. So therefore, the M value for 100 degree phase plane is 6. So a KD is called the distribution factor. I have already told you KD is called as the distribution factor and TB is called as the turns for phase. Then, what is the ratio of the what is the ratio of the M value for 100 degree phase plane by M value for 60 degree phase plane is equal to just the ratio of these two things 6 by 3 6 by 3 is nothing but 2 so 2 you are going to get or instead of doing instead of doing all these crazy things i am going to give you a direct formula which is this ratio is always equal to the corresponding phase front angle by corresponding phase front angle means for the m value for 100 degree if you want just go for the 100 degree by 60 degree so 100 by 60 is again 2 so therefore Instead of all, instead of doing all these crazy things, directly you can use this formula which is the M value for 100 degree by M value of 60 degree is nothing but it is a ratio of the corresponding phase spread angles. This is 120 by 60. This is 120 and this is 60. So 100 by 60 is again 2. So instead of doing all these crazy things, we can directly use this formula which is the M value for the M value ratio is nothing but it is a ratio of the corresponding phase spreads. So now we can substitute these two here. And if you do the simplification of the remaining things, then what you are going to get, we will see now. So now I am going to keep this value, this 2 value in this one. Then sin 30 by sin 60 into here m of 120 by m of 60 is nothing but this value is 2, sin 30 is half and sin 60 is root 3 by 2. If you do the simplification of all these crazy things, finally you are going to get 1.15. So therefore we can say that the KV rating of the, the KV rating of the 3 phase alternator if you want for 60 degree phase spread, its value is more higher when compared to a KV reading of a 3 phase system if you go for the 100 degree phase spread. This is a very important point. So therefore we can say that in a, the KV reading of a 3 phase system if you want for 60 degree phase spread is always higher than the KV reading of a 3 phase system for 100 degree phase spread. So therefore we can say its ratio is always equal to 1.15. So this value is very higher when compared to this value. This is a very important point that you always need to understand with the ratio of the corresponding distribution factors for the corresponding phase spreads. And then I have already told you if you want to find the M value for the corresponding phase spread just to the ratio of the corresponding phase spread angles then you are going to get the you are going to get that ratio, you can substitute in the formula and do the simplification, you are going to get one important point which is the KV rating of a three phase system. If you want for 60 degree phase split is higher than the KV rating of a three phase system if you want for the 100 degree phase spread. So 120 degree phase spread is called as the wide phase spread and the 60 degree phase spread is called as the narrow phase spread. These two spreads, phase spreads are going to occur only in the three phase system. Similarly, we are going to find the EMF induced also. So EMF also we are going to know, know here. So therefore the EMF ratios, the EMS, the EMF which is induced in the three phase system for 60 degree phase speed by the EMF induced in the three phase system for 100 degree phase speed also we are going to see now. So therefore same thing it is a ratio, it is a ratio because the turns per phase, the turns per phase is same whether it is a three phase, see in the numerator the denominator it is a three phase system, denominator whether it is 60 degrees or 100 degrees, the turns per phase is same. So therefore this turns per phase are also going to get cancelled so we can say that if for a three phase system, for a three phase system, the ratio of the, the ratio of the KV rating, the ratio of the active output power and the ratio of the EMF induced per phase for is always same which is equal to 1.15. This is what I am trying to say because here we are, we are, we are, we have to keep the extra turns per phase. It is a very same in front because both the numerator and is a three phase system. So turns per phase is same. So they are going to get cancelled. So all these three things are directly proportional to the KD. So therefore that value we are going to get which is equal to 1.15 just now we have seen. So therefore this is 1.15. So simply we can say that finally in a three phase system the EMF induced for and the EMF induced and the KV rating and the active power of the 60 degree phase spread is always higher than the EMF induced or the KV rating or the active output power of the 100 degree phase spread, 100 degree wide spread. So this number is always greater than the denominator and its value the ratio is always equal to 1.15. So we can say simply the KV and the output and the induced voltage per phase of the narrow phase spread is higher 
and convert to white phase spread because we have seen clearly from this expression. So we can say that the KV reading and the actual output power and the induced voltage per phase of the narrow phase spread is always higher when compared to white phase spread in a three phase system and its rating is always equal to and in a three phase system the ratio is always equal to 1.15. So KV rating of uh, KV rating of the machine and the actual output power and the induced voltage per phase of the narrow white phase spread is always higher when compared to white phase spread in a three phase system and the ratio is equal to 1.15. And the narrow phase spread can be obtained in single layer winding and a double layer winding. So single layer winding means simply we can say simple layer, simple layer winding means in a one slot if you keep one connector it is called a single layer winding and double layer winding means in a one slot if you keep more than if you keep two connectors in a one slot it is said to be a double layer winding. So narrow phase spread can be obtained in single layer winding and also in the double layer winding whereas the wide phase spread is possible only in the double layer winding. So this is a very important point. The narrow phase spread is possible if you go for the single layer winding or the double layer winding whereas the, the whereas the wide phase spread is possible only in the double layer winding. This is a very important concept. So narrow phase spread can be obtained only in the single layer winding and also the double layer winding whereas the wide, wide phase spread is possible only in the double layer winding. So in the practical system narrow phase spread is widely preferred. But in the practical systems, we, we prefer to use the narrow phase spread only because, because I have already told you in the narrow phase spread, the amount of EMF induced, the amount of active power output given by the alternator and the amount of TV rating of the machine is very higher. That is the reason in the practical world, we try to prefer the narrow phase spread rather than the wide phase spread because of this way number of advantages. So we can say that simply in the practical world, we try to prefer the narrow phase spread because the, the EMF which is induced and also the KVA rating and the amount of active power delivered by the alternator for the 60 degree phase spread is higher when compared to the 400 degree phase spread. So this is more preferred when compared to wide phase spread and I have already told you narrow phase spread can be obtained with the single layer winding or double layer winding. So it is a very big advantage whereas the wide phase spread can be obtained only with double layer winding. By using wide phase spread, third harmonic carbon is eliminated. I have already told you the if you the, the amount of phase spread angle is required to eliminate the nth harmonic is 360 by n. If you want to remove the third harmonic, this substitute n is equal to 3. So 360 by 3 is nothing but 120 degree. So 120 degree itself is called as a wide phase spread. So with the help of wide phase spread, we are going to eliminate the third harmonic component in the induced voltage. So therefore, if you go for the wide spread, uh, if you go for the wide spread connection, the third harmonic component is eliminated. So now we are going to study the comparison of the three phase and two phase. Now we will see what is the ratios of the, uh, uh, the, the ra now we will see the ratios of the, the amount of KV reading, the amount of active power output and the amount of the induced voltage for two different systems. One is the three phase system and the other is the two phase system and we will see which one is the higher. So therefore we can say clearly it is so. KV reading of 60 degree phase spread I am going to use because it is the most practical used when compared to 100 degree. So I am going to use the 60 degree here in the three phase system. So KV reading of the 60 degree phase spread of the three phase system and for two phase system the phase spread is I have already told you one important formula. For n phase system the phase spread is 180 by n. For two phase space substitute n is equal to 2. So 180 by 2 is nothing but 90 degree. So therefore 90 degree here. So KV rating of the 60 degree phase spread for three phase system by ratio of the KV rating of the 90 degree phase spread for two phase system. It is a ratio of the corresponding KD. So KD is the distribution factor for the 60 degree phase spread by distribution factor for the 90 degree phase spread. So now use the formula KD is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. So sin of m beta is called as a phase spread for three phase system which is 60 degree by 2 by m of 60 into sin of beta by 2 by sin of 90 by 2 by m 90 into sin beta by 2. So if we do a simplification, finally we are going to get sin 30 by sin 45 into m 90 by m 60. See sin 30 by sin 45, but this value we need to figure out. I have already told you, easy way to remember the ratio of the corresponding m for the corresponding, the ratio of the m for the different phase, different phase spread is the ratio of the corresponding phase spreads. It is equal to m 90 by 60. So if we do a simplification of this, sin 30 is half 
sin 45 is 1 by root 2 into 90 by 60. If you simplify, we are going to get 1.06. So, simply we can say that this ratio is equal to 1.06. It, it, it indicates that the amount of KVA rating in a three-phase system is always higher when compared to two-phase system. This is the meaning of this one. So, therefore, the, if you go for three-phase connection, then we can say the amount of KVA you are going to get is higher when compared to the KV of a two-phase system. So, its ratio is equal to 1.06. So, I request you to remember this value because these type of things are going to ask me in examination. So, there you, you don't have to do all these crazy things. If you remember this one, you can easily tick the answer. So, therefore, I request you to remember this value which is 1.06. So therefore, KV rating of a three-phase system, 60 degree base plate is very practical used. So we have taken 60 degree, not not the 120 degree. So therefore, by KV rating of the 90 degree phase plate of two-phase system is 1.06. So now, in the same manner, we are going to find what is the EMF induced also. EMF induced in the three-phase system and also the two-phase system. The EMF induced in the three-phase system for 60 degree phase plate by EMF induced in the two-phase system for 90 degree phase plate is the I have already told you, TM is always directly proportional to the, corresp into pro the product of the distribution factor into the turns per phase, which is KD by KD for 60 degree phase plate by KD by any degree phase plate into turns per phase. See, turns per phase, as there are, see, let me assume the total number of turns are T. As it is a three phase system, turns for one phase is T by 3, so therefore T by 3. And same thing, T number of T turns are there, but the two phase system, so per phase we are going to get T by 2. So T by 3 by T by 2, if you simplify these things, so I have already told you, the ratio, this ratio is nothing but this value which is equal to 1.06. So 1.06 into 1 by T by 3 by T by 2, if you saw this one, we are going to get 0 0.706. So if you see clearly, this ratio is lesser than 1, it indicates that the amount of EMF induced in the two-phase system is very higher when compared to EMF induced in the three-phase system. Because in a two-phase system, per one phase, we get huge number of tones, which is T by 2, whereas in a three-phase system, the number of tones is only T by 3. So, less are the tones, less are the EMF induced. More is the tones, we have more is the EMF induced. So, we can say clearly, denominator is higher compared to numerator, the that is the meaning its ratio is lesser than 1, which is equal to 0 0.706. So, this is the value that you always have to remember. So, simply we can say the KV reading of the three phase system is higher than the KV reading of the two phase system, whereas the EMF induced per phase in a two phase system is very higher when compared to EMF induced in a three phase system. Similarly, now we are going to compare, now we are going to compare the three phase and single phase. In the initial case, we have compared the three phase for 60 degree phase spread and 1 degree phase spread and now we are in the, in the other case we have learned about the combination of three phase and single two phase but now finally we are going to compare three phase and single phase so therefore now the kv rating of the three phase system for 60 degree phase spread because it is widely used narrow phase spread is widely used when compared to 100 degree phase spread by kv rating of single phase system i have already told you for in phase system, the phase spread is 180 by n. If the substitute n is equal to 1, we are going to get 180 degree. So, this is 180 degree. This is equal to ratio of the corresponding KD values. So, KD per 60 degree by KD by 180. So, if I, I already told you sin of m beta by 2 by, by sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2, which is equal to m of sin of sin of 60 by 2 by m60 into sin beta by 2 by sin of 180 by 2 by m of 180 into sin of beta by 2. If we simplification, finally we are going to write sin 30 by sin 90 into m of 180 by m of 60. m means the m value, m value for 100 degree phase split by m value for 60 degree phase split. I have already told one important point which is just do the corresponding ratio of the corresponding phase splits which is 180 by 60. So therefore, sin of 30 by sin of 90 into which is uh, 180 by 60. If you simplify this one, we are going to get 1.15. So simply we can say that so, more is the facing, more is the KV rating. So, therefore, if you go for higher higher amount of uh, phase, we are going to get higher amount of KV rating. So, that is what we have seen here. In a three-phase system, is new, this number is higher than the denominator. That is the reason this ratio is greater than 1, which is equal to 1.5. So, therefore, we can say the KV rating of a three-phase system is always higher than the KV rating of a single-phase system, which is equal to, the ratio is equal to 1.5. Similarly, I want to find what is the amount of EMF induced for this three phase and the single phase. 
So EMF induced for a three phase system for a 60 degree phase spread by EMF induced for a single phase system of 1 degree phase spread. It is a ratio of the KD and the T. So KD of 60 degree by KD by 90 into turns per phase. For a, if suppose let me assume there are total number of turns are T. Per a phase we are going to get T by 3 because the three phase system. For a single phase means the total number of turns is T. Single phase means only one phase. So T by 1. So this ratio just now we have seen it is equal to 1.5 into and do the ratio of this one and do the multiplication of these two things finally we are going to get 0 0.5 so we can say that simply the amount of EMF induced in a single phase per phase is higher when compared to EMF induced in a three phase system whereas whereas the KV rating of a three phase system is higher than the KV rating of a single phase so this is the very important point that you always need to understand so more is the so more is the so more is the facing that the K rating will be higher but the EMF induced per phase is going to get decrease. This is what I am trying to tell you finally. So if you go for more amount of facing, the K rating of the system will increase but the EMF induced per phase will decrease because the turns are going to get reduced per phase. So therefore overall voltage induced per phase are going to get decrease. So this is the conclusion that I, have, that I want to tell you but you have to remember these values of the ratios for the three phase for the three phase and two phase and the three phase and single phase their values you should always be remember because in examinations they are going to directly ask these ratios so in the examinations if you do all these crazy things it will take a lot of time and it is going to waste your precious time in the examination so this is the value that you should, you should always remember so therefore see more is the k more is the phasing more is the amount of kv reading kv reading but the lesser is the voltage induced per phase so therefore, this three phase by single phase voltage induced per phase is only 0 0.5. So finally, I am going to do the conclusion of what are the things that we have learned in the comprehension of the three phase, three phase and two phase and three phase and single phase in this table. So let me do the comprehension of each and everything what we have learned up to now. So therefore, here phase spread, the type of system and the type of KV rating of alternator. So therefore, if you do in this manner, suppose Suppose if you take a phase spread of 60 degree, this is for three phase system. Let me assume, let me assume the KV rating of alternator is 300 kVA for this category. Let me assume in this manner. So therefore, for 60 degree phase spread with a three phase system, let me assume the KV rating of alternator is 300 kVA. Then if you go for two phase system, if you go for two phase, two phase system, I have already told the important relation which is the KV rating the KV rating of three phase system for 60 degree phase speed by KV rating of two phase system for 90 degree is equal to 1.06. So, therefore, if you do this value by, if you do the division of this value by 1.06, we are going to get 23.01. So, therefore, we can say this is the value of the KV rating of the alternator we are going to get for two phase system with a 90 degree phase speed. Similarly, I want to find for three phase system for 100 degree phase speed, I want to find what is the value of the KV rating. I have already told the important, the important relation which is the KVA rating, the KVA rating of the 60 degree of three phase system by KVA rating of the 100 degree phase, three phase is equal to, is equal to just now we have seen its value is equal to 1.15. So if you do this value, if you divide this value by 1.15, we are going to get 260.08 KVA. So therefore we can say 260.08 KVA we are going to get. Similarly, for single phase system, so for single phase system the phase speed is 180 degree, I want to find what is the rating of this one. Just now we have seen the relation which is the KV rating of the three phase system especially the 60 degree by KV rating of single phase system which value is equal to 1.5. So if you do the ratio of this 300 by 1.5 we are going to get 200 KVA. So this is the things that we are going to get if you assume the KV rating of the uh, three phase system per 60 degree phase spread is 300 kVA. So based on the relation that what we have learned, so yeah, you, you can get these remaining values from this one. By using the, the values which we have learned up to now. So if you see some very specific point, see as phase spread increases, so you can see from here to here, 60 degree, 90 degree, 100 degree and 90 degree. If you increase the phase spread of the system, if you increase the phase spread of the system, you can see it's a 300 kVA, 283, 260, 200. So when you increase the phase speed, the KV is decreasing. So therefore, when you increase the phase speed, the KV rating of the R is going to get decreased. You can see clearly from this table only. So as I am going to increase the phase speed from up to down, 
from Hapu dog here, the corresponding, the corresponding K will be more, the altitude is going to get decreased. It's a very important point. So whenever you increase the phase spread, Whenever you increase the phase spread, the KV reading of the R tender is going to get decreased. It's a very important relation that you should always need to understand. So now we are going to discuss about the uniformly distributed winding. So uniformly distributed winding means what? See uniformly distributed winding means simply we can say that here if the rotor slots are very very close to each other, if the rotor slots are very close to each other, then what is going to happen? The angle beta is going to get decreased because beta is called as the it is the beta is called as the slot angle, which is nothing but one degree by four pitch, or simply we can say overall overall three sixty degrees by the, the number of slots are present on the stator. So we can say clearly if the number of slots increases, then beta value goes up decreases. So let me consider suppose this is called as the slots stator. In the slots, I am going to keep the conductors. So then this is the reference point is O. So OA is the EMF which is induced in the conductor A and OB is the EMF which is induced in the conductor B and OC is the voltage which is induced in the conductor C. Similarly, O D is the voltage which is induced in the conductor D and OC O E is the EMF which is induced in the conductor E. Similarly, OF is the induced EMF in the conductor F. Similarly, OG is the induced EMF in the conductor G. Similarly, OH is the induced limit from the conductor H. So, this is the overall diagram we are going to get. And beta is the slot angle. Within this two, let me assume which and every conductor the EMF induced is of same magnitude. Then AB is called as the induced voltage between the first two conductors. So, AB is called as the, the resultant EMI which is induced between the first two conductors or we can say conductor A and conductor B. This is called as the EMF polygon. This is called as the EMF polygon. I have already told you beta. Beta is called as the slot angle. Slot angle means we can say simply it is a ratio of the 180 degrees by pole pitch. So therefore, 180 degree by pole pitch is nothing but pole slot, the number of slots per pole. So angle between the two slots, it is basically it is going to give you information about the angle between the two slots. As slots increases, then definitely the beta value decreases. So, if you increase the number of slots on the stator, then the angle between the slots is goes on decreases. So, it is goes on decreases further and further if you increase the number of slots. If the EMF polygon shape is approximately cycle, then it is called as the uniformly distributed winding. It happens whenever the beta is less than 50. So, whatever the EMF polygon which you are going to get in the above figure, I have already shown you, if the number of slots increases, then the EMF polygon is approximated to a circle shape. You can see a circle shape if you see the edges of the point A, B, C. So then, so therefore, this is happens only when the beta is lesser than 15 degree. So this is possible only when the beta is lesser than 15 degree. So the EMF polygon shape is approximately circle when it is called as the uniform distributed winding. It happens only whenever the beta is lesser than 15 degree. The EMF polygon shape is going to approximately the circle, then it is called as the uniformly distributed winding. It happens whenever the beta is lesser than 15 degree. The EMF polygon shape is approximately circle, then it is called as the uniform distributed winding. This happens only whenever the beta is less than 15. Means that, suppose, if the number of slots are increases further and further and further, then the slot angle goes on degrees. If the slot angle is lesser than 15 degree, if the slot angle is lesser than 15 degree, then we can say that whatever the EMF polygon which you have drawn in the previous one, we are going to get an approximate shape of a circle. If you see the edges of the point A, B and C. So that is the meaning of this concept. So for uniformly winding, uniformly distributed winding. So therefore this is going to happen. Uniformly means the number of slots are increases. So the EMF polygon shape is approximately circle. Then it is called as a uniformly distributed winding. It happens only whenever the slot angle is, le is less than 15 degree. In uniformly distributed winding, sinusoidal induced voltage is obtained. So if this is the case, if this is the case, then we are going to get a sinusoidal induced voltage is going to get obtained in this case. So if you go for the uniformly distributed winding, then definitely whatever the voltage which is induced in that terminus of the conductors, we are going to get a 
two sans order wave waveform we are going to get so whenever you increase the number of slots on the state and the beta value goes on decreases beta is called as the slot angle then this is called as the emf polygon we are going to see basically this like a circle this is called as a basically uniformly distributed winding and the emf which is going to induce this pure sans order in nature if one alternator consists of 200 slots and the other order consists of 20 slots in the first alternator sans order induced voltage is obtained but not in the other so let me give you small example suppose there are two alternators the first alternator has a 200 slots 200 slots on the stator and the second alternator has only 20 slots on the stator so you can see clearly as the number of slots increases then the beta value goes on decreases So whenever you go for the uniformly distributed winding, then we can say the EMF which is induced in the more number of slots will be pure sans order, but not in the later case. That is the meaning of Wilson. So if one alternator consists of 200 slots and the other and the other alternator consists of 20 slots in the first alternator, definitely sans order induced voltage is going to obtain, but not in the other case. Then the dist the distortion and you can say the distribution factor is equal to kd is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2 all these things are already told you now what is going to happen is see whenever so whenever so same thing i have written again sin of m beta by 2 by here this sin of beta by 2 so what is going to happen see this beta is very very less so in a sinusoidal wave form you can see clearly whenever the theta is very 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 less then sin and theta is nearly approximately to a straight line with a slope of 45 degree or we can say slope of unity so y is equal to x graph you can easily see so therefore sin and theta is nearly equal to theta because whenever the theta is very very less so you can approximate to a straight line of slope m of slope is equal to 1 so therefore sin and theta is nearly equal to theta so therefore just i am going to replace sin and theta by 2 by just only a beta by 2 so this is the things that you are going to get because in a uniform distributed winding the beta value is so much lesser so therefore sin and theta is nearly equal to theta so by this concept we are going to replace sin of beta by 2 by beta by 2 so this is the approximate equation we are we can get and we can simplify this one to get the respect of the distortion factor so this is the formula which is the simplification it's a very easy analysis for the uniformly distributed winding so kd is equal to sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2 this is the actual formula but we have approximated to this one for for the special case of uniform distributed winding so now we will discuss about the other important concept which is called as the advantages of using the short pitch winding the advantages of using the short pitch winding i have already told you regarding some of the advantages of the short pitch winding in the earlier only see the dominant harmonics are eliminated see the dominant harmonics are eliminated so sans order voltage is obtained i have already told you in basically in alternator we are going to get different types of harmonic voltages so we have to remove except the fundamental we have to remove each and everything this is possible only with the help of the short pitch winding so only with the help of short pitch winding we can eliminate the harmonics so therefore we can say that whenever you remove the harmonics only the fundamental component is going to present so therefore you are going to get a pure sans order output voltage so this is possible only with the help of short pitch winding so therefore we can say the dominant harmonics are easily eliminated so sans order output voltage is obtained if you go for the short pitch winding similarly the eigen loss the we can say that the eigen loss is directly proportional to the frequency square whereas the eigen loss is directly proportional to the frequency whenever the maximum flux density is a constant we can say that the eigen loss is directly proportional to frequency and the eigen loss is directly proportional to frequency square the summation of the eigen loss and the eigen loss is called as the eigen losses see as the frequency of harmonic increases as the frequency increases of harmonics the eigen losses increases so by using short pitch winding we are eliminating the higher order harmonics so iron losses decreases by eliminating the dominant harmonics fifth and seventh are reducing the iron losses i have already told you see the net iron loss means it is a summation of the distance loss and the eddy current loss distance loss means it is directly proportional to supply frequency whenever the 
beam axis constant. Similarly, the anti-current losses directly proportional to the sphere of the frequency whenever the maximum flux density is constant. So we can say that for harmonics, definitely the frequency are more than the fundamental. As the frequency increases, the summation of the hysteresis and the anti-current loss is called as angle losses. So whenever the harmonics are there, the frequency is higher when compared to fundamental. So therefore, because of these components, the iron loss are also going to get increased. So if you go for the short pitch winding, we are going to eliminate these higher order harmonics, especially the fifth and seventh dominant harmonics. We can easily remove them with the help of short pitch winding. If we remove them, then definitely we are going to remove the losses because of them also, which are the iron loss also we can reduce if we remove those harmonics. So we can say that simply as the frequency of the harmonic increases, the iron losses increases. So by using the short pitch winding, we are eliminating the higher order harmonics. So iron losses decreases. So by eliminating the dominant harmonics of turn 7 are reducing the iron losses. So with the help of short pitch winding, we are going to remove the higher order harmonics because they are going to make the overall output voltage in a non-sizable format. So with the help of short pitch winding, we are going to eliminate them and their corresponding losses of the iron loss also, we are going to eliminate them completely with the help of using the short pitch winding. Lesser copper material is required for end connections when using the short pitch winding than full pitch winding. See, if you go for the short pitch winding, if you want to connect the conductors in the slots, the overhang, whatever the overhang you are going to require is very less when compared to full pitch and the over pitch. That is the case which can say that less amount of copper material is required for the short pitch winding than the full, full pitch or the over pitch winding. So whenever you go for the less amount of copper material, you require less amount of cost. So these are the advantages that you are going to get if you go for the short pitch winding rather than full pitch or over pitch. So let me discuss, let me do the conclusion of the advantages of the short pitch winding. The first one is we can remove the dominant harmonics with the help of short pitch winding. If we remove the dominant harmonics, their respect to losses of the iron loss are also going to get reduced and the less amount of carbon material is required because in a short pitch the overhang in connecting the connectors in the slots is very, very less so if the less amount of carbon material is required then we can say that the cost is also going to get decrease if you go for the short pitch winding so these are the the main three important advantages of the short pitch winding now let me discuss the main disadvantages of using the short pitch winding. In a short pitch coil, the resulting voltage is lesser when compared to full pitch coil. This concept I already told you whenever when I when I was discussing the concept regarding the, the EMF in used in the short pitch winding. I already told you the EMF, the resultant EMF in used in the short pitch winding, the expression is 2E into cos of alpha by 2. This expression I have already told you, whereas the EMF induced in the full pitch winding is 2E. So, 2 e cos alpha by 2 is lesser when compared to 2 e because cos alpha is always lesser than or equal to 1. So, therefore, we can say that always the EMF, the resultant voltage which is in the short pitch coil is always lesser when compared to full pitch coil. So, therefore, we can say that even though you are going to get lot of advantages, but the only disadvantages with the help of short pitch winding is the resultant voltage across the conductors in the short pitch winding is going to get decrease when compared to full pitch coil. So, these are the some of the important advantages and the disadvantages of the short pitch winding. So, now we will discuss some of the advantages of distributed winding. So, previous case we have learned about the short pitch winding. But now we will discuss about the distributed winding. Distributed winding is I have already told you the coil sides of a one coil are kept in different slots. They will be said to be distributed winding. But if you keep all the coil sides in a one slot in a stator, it is said to be concentric winding. So, now we will see the advantages of using the distributed winding. See, Higher order harmonics are eliminated. So, higher order harmonics are eliminated. So, pure sizable output voltage will, will you are going to get. And the higher order harmonics are eliminated, thereby sizable induced voltage will obtain. So, if you go for the distributed winding, then definitely I have already told you there is a factor which is called as the distort distribution factor. So, pitch factor for the pitch for the short pitch winding and distribution factor for the distributed winding. I have already told. 
If you are going to eliminate the higher order harmonics, then the induced voltage because of the higher order harmonics are also going to get eliminated. If they are going to eliminate only fundamental is going to get removed, so output will be pure sensing in nature. So therefore, we can say that simply with the help of distributed winding, we can remove the higher order harmonics are eliminated. So pure sensing output voltage is going to occur because only fundamental is remain. As the higher order harmonics are eliminated, eliminated, thereby sensing voltage is going to get obtained. And the higher losses is directly proportional to the excess losses directly proportional to frequency. And the higher and the additional losses directly proportional to square of frequency. Whenever the whenever the the maximum flux density is constant. So therefore, we can say clearly. Suppose both of the higher order harmonics like eleven times of frequency, thirteen times of frequency. These higher order harmonics, when higher order harmonics are eliminated, their corresponding loss are also reduced by eliminating the higher order harmonics. Higher loss are reduced. So I have already explained this concept in the previous short bridge winding itself. If you are going to eliminate the higher order harmonics, then their losses corresponding to higher loss are also going to get decreased because as frequency increases, the loss are also going to increase in this fashion. The summation of the hysteresis and the different losses is called the iron loss. So we can decrease them if you can if you are going to remove this iron order harmonics with the help of distributed winding. So with the help of distributed winding, we can remove all this iron order harmonics also. We can easily eliminate them. If you are going to eliminate them, then the corresponding losses with respect to iron loss are also going to get decreased. So uniform temperature rise is present for for all these clouds. So if you use the if you use the distributed winding, then uniform temperature rise is present for all these clouds. See if you keep all the for a given coil, if you keep all the coil slots in one slot, then definitely we can say the temperature rise will be very high. It is called the concentric winding. But if you keep the the coil sides of a coil of a one coil, if, if the for a one coil, if you keep If you keep the coil slots in different different slots, then we can say that the amount of temperature rise is uniform in all the slots. So therefore, we can say uniform temperature rise is present for all the slots if you go for the distributed winding. So the concentric winding for a given coil, you are going to keep all the coil slots in one slot, so the temperature rise will be very high. But if you go for the distributed winding, means keeping for a for a one coil, if you keep the Coil sets in a different different slots, but not in a, so one same slot. Then definitely we can say that the uniform temperature rise is going to be present in all the slots. So this is one of the main advantage of using the distributed winding. So uniform temperature rise is present for all the slots if you go for the distributed winding. Similarly, the other important point is that distributed has more mechanical balance than concentric winding. So the mechanical balance is very high. So distributed winding has more mechanically balanced than the concentric winding. So the mechanical balance is very high for distributed winding. See, if you are going to keep all the for a given coil, if you keep all the coil sides in a one slot, its temperature rise will be very high, and also we can say that the mechanical balance is very less. It's very less because in one slot we are going to keep all the characters means the weight will be increased, so there will be no balance nature. But if you keep the the different coil slots in the different slots, then definitely of one coil, then definitely the temperature rise is uniform and the mechanical balance is also very high. So these are the some of the important advantages of using the distributed winding. So let me summarize the advantages of distributed winding. The first thing is the higher order harmonics are eliminated. So therefore, the EMF is the flux will have only the the EMF will have only the formal component. So EMF will be pure sinusoidal, and the corresponding loss are also being reduced with the help of this winding. And if you are going to keep the distributed winding, means for a given one coil, if you keep the, if you are going to keep the coil slots of different in a different slots, then the temperature rise will be uniform. The temperature rise will be uniform, and also we can see the mechanical balance is also very high if you go for these cases. And the disadvantage of using the 
distributed winding. So what is the disadvantage of using the distributed winding? The net induced voltage of the distributed winding is lesser when compared to concentric winding. This is the same principle which are going to hold for the short pitch winding. So in the distributed winding, the amount of EMF which is induced is always less when compared to concentric winding. I have already told this important point here. KD is the ratio of the EMF which is induced, which is induced, the EMF which is induced in the distributed winding per phase by EMF which is induced per phase in the concentric winding. So its ratio is always lesser than 1. It indicates that the net voltage in the concentric winding per phase is very higher when compared to distributed winding per phase. So therefore we can say that finally the net amount of induced voltage of the distributed winding is always less when compared to concentric winding. So this is one of the main disadvantages of using the distributed winding. So these are the some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages of using the distributed winding in the synchronous machines. So now we will discuss some more important points on the single layer winding. Single layer winding means I have already told you single layer winding is preferred only for low rating machines means only one coil side in one slot. So only one coil side in one slot means if you keep, if you keep basically I have already told you in a slot if you keep one connector in a one slot it is said to be single layer, single layer winding or simply we can say one coil side in one slot it is said to be a single layer winding. So therefore single layer winding is always preferred. Single layer winding is always preferred only for the low rating machines means only for a given coil. So one coil side, so one coil side is placed, is placed in one slot it is said to basically it is called a single layer winding. So single layer winding is preferred only for the low rating machines means only one coil side in one slot. So for a given coil, if you keep only one coil side in one slot, it is said to be a single layer winding. In a single layer winding, coil groups have different size and shape, thereby cost is also very high. So therefore, in single layer winding, the coil groups have different size and shape, so that the cost is very high. So therefore, this is a very important point regarding the single layer winding. And I already told you, in a three phase system, 60 degree phase speed, you can get either by the single layer winding or the double layer winding, but you can get only the phase speed of 120, you can get only through the double layer winding. So now we will discuss some more important points on the double layer winding. So some more important points on the double layer winding. See, coil groups have identical shapes and equal size. Cost is less and the two coil sides in one slot. So coil groups have identical shapes and equal size. So therefore the cost is less and the two coil sides in one slot. So if you keep the two coil sides in a one slot, it is said to be a double layer winding. Whereas in the previous case, you have to keep only one coil side in the one slot, it is said to be a single layer winding. But if you keep the two coil sides in one slot, it is said to be a double layer winding. And in the double layer winding, the coil groups have the identical shapes and the equal size, so cost is less. Whereas in the, sing whereas in the single layer winding, the coil groups the coil groups have basically different size and shape, so therefore the cost is very high. So this is a very important point that you always have to remember. So whereas in the double layer winding, two coil cells in one slot and the coil groups have identical shapes and equal size, so therefore cost is less. Whereas in the single layer winding, we have the coil groups of different shapes and different size, so cost is very high. And here in a one slot, we are going to keep only one coil cell in a single layer winding. Fractional slot winding can be provided. So fractional slot winding can also be provided in the double layer winding and the short pitch winding can also be provided. So both these are being provided with the help of double layer winding. See all these things I have already told in the in the earlier concepts only, which is in a see we can, in a double layer winding we can get the in the double layer winding we can get the fractional slot winding and also the short pitch winding. So therefore you can see that simply in a double layer winding, in a double layer winding we can get the fractional slot winding and also the short pitch winding is also being we are going to get. So therefore the fractional slot winding and the short pitch winding can be can be obtained in this double layer winding. And the leakage reactance is less and all the coils have the identical shapes and, and equal size. And one of told me this concept which is they have identical shape and equal size and also the leakage reactance is very less. Because the leakage flux is very less so therefore the leakage gap is also less and all the coils have the identical shape and equal size and the, in, and the silent solar induced voltage is obtained. So in double layer winding we are going to get the more amount of silent solar induced voltage is obtained when as compared to the previous one. So these are the some of the important points regarding the 
double layer binding so therefore in summary i can say that in a single layer binding we are going to keep only one coin side in a one slot and also this single layer binding is used only for the low rating machines only we are going to use here and also here the coil groups have the different size and shape so therefore the cost is very high because in the double layer binding here two coil sides are placed in one slot and the coil groups have the identical shape and equal size so cost is very less and we can even provide the fractional slot binding and short pitch binding can also be provided in the double layer binding and the leakage flux is less so the leakage reactance is also less and uh, we are going to get the cylindrical induced voltage is obtained in the double layer binding and the double layer binding is used for the higher rating machines whereas single layer is binding for the lower rating machines the double layer binding is used for the higher rating machines so this is a very important point which is a p pole a p pole in phase double layer winding is housed in a b slots in a b slots in a stator with a 60 degree phase plane coil span is c not and number of slots in which top and bottom layers belongs to different phases is how many number of things so you can see suppose a p pole so stator has p poles and the m phase double layer winding is housed in a b number of slots in a stator so stator has basically b number of slots and it has p number of poles and it is a n phase system with double layer winding so it is a, it has a 60 degree phase plane so coil span is c dot at the number of slots in which the number of slots in which top and bottom layers belongs to different phases so in a stator how many number of slots how many number of slots the topper and the bottom the top layer and the bottom layer has different phases how many number of slots in the topper layer and the bottom layer has different phases which is 2pn so 2pn is the thing so p is called as the number of poles and n is called as the number of phases which is 2pn p is called the number of poles and n is called as the number of phases the direct formula which is 2pn so it is irrespective of number of slots i think it is not independent of it is independent of the slots and it is independent of the c not it is only depends upon this formula 2pn so 2pn is a formula that you need to remember so 2pn is the number of slots in which we can say that the top layer and the bottom layer has the different phases if the top layer is a the bottom layer will be let me example take phase b or phase c so like this we have to see this one so if a stator has p number of poles and it is a n phase system and the stator has b number of slots then for a 60 degree phase spread with a coil span of c not the number of slots in which the top and the bottom layers belongs to different phases is 2 pn which is two times of p is called the number of poles on the stator and n is the the phase the n phase system that we are going to use so a p pole n phase double layer winding is housed in a b number of slots in the stator with 60 degree phase spread and the coil span is c not the number of slots in which the top layer and the bottom layer belongs to different phases is 2 pn where p is the number of poles and n is the number of phases so now we will discuss the emf equation of alternator so emf now we are going to discuss about another new concept which is called as the emf equation of alternator i have already used this equation in the previous classes only but here let me give in detail the derivation of this one so, so therefore you can use it to understand further the remaining concepts the emf equation of alternator see phi is called as the flux per pole see one pole it is going to deliver a flux of phi so phi is the flux per pole and p is the total number of poles the total number of poles which are present on the stator and n is called as the n is called as the number of it is the speed of the rotor in rpm which is 128 by p because the rotor speed is nothing but it is the synchronous speed the rotor is always going to rotate with the synchronous speed so therefore 128 by p and j and j is called as the total number of connectors per phase so j means the total number of connectors which are present per phase and t is called as the total number of turns per phase and kt is called as the pitch factor and kd is called as the distribution factor and kf is called as the form factor form factor is the ratio of the rms value by average value which is e rms by e average because we are going to use that for voltage so easy to remember is fra f r a f means form factor r means rms a means average rms value by average value for a pure sinusoidal is rms value is vm by root 2 and average is vm by pi so if you do the ratio of these two things we are going to get 1.11 the form factor of a pure sinusoidal waveform is 1.11 whereas the kw is called the winding factor it is a product of the pitch factor and the distribution factor so winding factor means kw it is a product of the pitch factor and the distribution factor 
So you need to limit all of these values, which is five squares, the flux per pole, and please the total number of poles which are present on the stator, and m square as the speed of the rotor in RPM, which is equal to one root by t, it is equal to synchronous speed itself because the rotor in a synchronous machine or we can say synchronous generator or alternator is going to be with the same synchronous speed. So rotor speed is equal to synchronous speed. And it is called as the total number of connectors which are present per phase on a stator. And T is called as the total number of turns per phase and KP is called as the pitch factor. Pitch factor is going to occur whenever you are going to use the short pitch winding. So whenever you go for the short pitch winding, definitely we are going to get the fact which is called as a pitch factor and KD is called as the distribution factor. Whenever you go for the distribution type of winding, then we can say that we are going a new factor is going to come which is called as the KD. KD is called as the distribution factor. Where K is called as the form factor, it is a ratio of the RMS value to the average value, which is ERMS by E average. It is nothing but for a pure sensible waveform, its ratio is equal to 1.11. And KW is called as the winding factor, it is the product of the pitch factor and the distribution factor. So, average induced EMF per conductor is equal to, so average induced EMF per conductor is equal to, suppose let me take one conductor, in one conductor, the amount of EMF induced is equal to, here n is equal to 1, so 1 into d5 by dt, general expression is n into d5 by dt, but here n is equal to 1, so the average amount of EMF induced per conductor is equal to d5 by dt, because n is equal to 1, so therefore, flux links with each connector in one revolution which is equal to see how much amount of flux which is linked by each connector in one revolution so therefore we can say that if for p if phi is a flux per one pole then definitely there are two poles so p into phi is a total flux which is linked by one connector in one revolution so therefore the flux links with each connector in one revolution is nothing but p phi so d phi is equal to p phi so p phi is the overall flux which is linked by one conductor in one complete revolution so therefore i already told you n by 16 is called as the revolutions per second so therefore revolutions per second so n by 16 is the revolutions per one second so therefore the rotor shaft or we can say the rotor shaft is making n by 60 revolutions in one second so one revolution is nothing but 60 by n seconds so this is dt so therefore this much amount of time is taken for one revolution of a rotor so if the rotor because on the rotor itself we are going to keep the the poles so therefore a one revolution a one revolution of the the poles is going to make a p phi amount of flux is being cut by a conductor each conductor in a time of we can say 60 by n seconds for a one revolution we need 60 by n seconds so therefore we can say simply the average emf induced in one connector is equal to the flux which is cut at p phi the total time which is 60 by n so therefore if you solve this one if you do a simplification of this one we are going to get 2 pi into f because n is equal to 120 f by p so if you do the simplification in this manner we are going to get 2 into 5 into f. So, this is the average amount of EMF which is induced in one connector. So, therefore, the average amount of EMF which is induced in one connector is equal to 2 phi into f. So, therefore, what is the average value? The average value, the RMS value, this is the average value. RMS value is nothing but 1.11 into average value. So, substitute here. So, so 1.11 into 2 phi f is nothing but 2.22 into 5 into f. So, this is the RMS value of the EMF which is induced in one connector. So, this is the RMS value of the EMF which is induced in one connector. As I now, if I, if I want to find in, in one turn, so in one turn, in one turn, there will be two connectors. So, go for again multiplication of two. So, then we are going to get 4.44 into 5F. So, this is the RMS value of the EMF induced in one turn. Suppose, in one phase, in one phase means definitely there will be T number of turns in one phase. So therefore, the amount of EI, the induced RMS, the amount of the, the the amount of RMS value of the induced voltage in one phase is nothing but 4.44 into 5 of T. So therefore, we can say T is called as the, the number of turns per phase. So therefore, the amount of RMS value of the induced voltage in one phase is equal to 4.44 into 5 of T. So T is called as the turns per phase and 4.44 into 5 is called as the flux per pole and F is the supply frequency and T is the, the number of turns in one phase. So, this is the, the RMS value of the induced voltage in one phase. See, above, the above EMF equation is valid when the alternator consists of full pitch coil and the concentric winding. So, whatever the above equation, 
that is the valid only for the full pitch coil with the concentric winding. So if you go for a full pitch coil with a concentric winding, then only the above formula is valid. But practically we prefer the distributed winding and short pitch because with the help of distributed winding and short pitch, we are going to eliminate the higher order, order harmonics. So if you can eliminate the higher order harmonics, then definitely we can only get the fundamental. So MF will be always pure sensible. So therefore, we have to do the manipulation or we can say we have to do some modification to the above EMF equation should be changed to get the new equation. So we have to multiply a, a constant is called as the KW. KW is called as the, the winding factor. It's the product of the pitch factor and the pitch factor and the KD. So therefore, KD is called the distribution factor. The distribution factor. So therefore, this winding factor should be multiplication for the previous equation. So this is the overall value of the new equation which is called as the EMF. The amount of EMF which is induced uh, the harmless value of the EMF induced in the one phase if you go from the short pitch winding with the distributed winding. So KP is the factor which is comes only for the short pitch winding and KD is the factor which, goes, which is going to come whenever you go for the distribution factor. So this is the overall equation that you always have to remember in the synchronous machine which is 4.44 into 5 into F into turns per phase into KP into KD. So 4.44 into 5F turns per phase into KB into KD. So this is the equation that you always have to remember for your lifetime in this synchronous machine subject. So let me repeat this concept. So therefore it will be very easy to analyze this one. The EMF equation of Waldrender we are going to figure out. 5 is called as a flux which is generated by one pole. And P is called as a total number of poles which are present on the basically we can see in the stator we are going to produce this one. So therefore and N is called as the and N is called as the speed of the rotor in RPM which is equal to 120F by P because MS is equal to MR is equal to 120F by P in a simple machine and Z means the total number of connectors per phase and T is called as the total number of turns per phase and KP is called as the pitch factor and KD is called as the distribution factor. So pitch factor is going to come only for the short pitch winding and, kit and the distribution factor is going to come only for the uh, distributed winding. And KF is called as a form factor, it is the ratio of the average value by RMS value. So ERMS by ERG is equal to 1.11 for a pure sinusoidal waveform. So therefore, the winding factor is the product of the pitch factor and the distribution factor. The average induced EMF per conductor is equal to, the average EMF induced per conductor is equal to D5 by DT per one conductor means N is equal to 1. So, the flux links with each connector in one revolution. The overall amount of flux linked by one connector in one revolution is equal to P5. So, therefore, we can say that M by 60 revolutions in one second. So, the rotor is going to make. So, if it is making N revolutions in one minute, so therefore, M by 60 revolutions in one second. So, a rotor is going to make N by 60 revolutions in one second. In one revolution, the time is just to the class multiplication, we are going to get 60 by N seconds. So, therefore, for one revolution of rotor, this much amount of time is taking. So therefore, the average value of the EMF induced, the average value of the EMF induced per conductor, per one conductor is equal to the total flux by total time. The total flux is P5 and the total time for one revolution is 60 by N because one conductor is taking a total amount of flux is 5 into P the total time of 60 by N. So therefore, a one conductor, the one conductor is taking a total flux of P5 in a one revolution is 60 by N. So therefore, N is equal to 120F by P. If you simplify this one, we are going to get 2 phi into F. This is the average value. But I want the RMS value. RMS value is equal to 1.11 into average value. So if we do the multiplication, we are going to get 2.22 into phi into F. This is the RMS value of the EMF induced in one conductor. So if you go for the in one turn, in one turn, there will be two conductors. So do the, do the multiplication by 2, we are going to get 4.44 into phi into F. So therefore, the amount of RMS value of the induced voltage in one turn, the amount of RMS value of the induced voltage in one turn is equal to 4.44 into 5 into F. But if I want to find in terms of one phase, in one phase there will be T number of turns, this is for one turn, for a, for a one phase there will be T number of turns, so therefore go for, go for multiplication of T. So therefore, the amount of RMS value of the induced voltage in one phase is equal to 4.44 into 5 of T, where T is called as the turns per phase. The equation is valid only if the alternate consists of full pitch coil and the concentric winding. So for a full pitch coil, KB is equal to 1 and for concentric winding, KD is equal to 
1. I have already told you the pitch fact for general formula which is cos of alpha by 2 and for concentric winding KD, K, uh, KD general formula is nothing but here sin of m beta by 2 by m into sin beta by 2. All these things I have already told you for pull pitch KD is equal to 1 and for concentric winding KD is equal to 1. So therefore, but practically we prefer to use the distributed winding and the short pitch. So therefore, the EMF equation should be changed from the previous just by doing a multiplication of KW, KW is nothing but KP into KD. So, overall expression is going to become the EMF, that we can say the RMS value of the EMF induced per one phase is equal to 4.44 into 5 EF uh, turns, turns per phase into KW, KW is nothing but KP into KD. So, this is the RMS value of the EMF induced per single phase. This is a very important equation that you always have to remember this very beautiful equation in a synchronous machine.